Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the Boxing Coalition. My name is Cam. Joining me tonight we have Kimo and Leon. I hope you guys are well. Kimo, let's get into Wilder Fury. Like I've not, I've seen a few things, uh, can, you know, of your opinion regarding the fight. Most of it was due to what Wilder wore into the ring, but we'll get to that later. But <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really know your opinion upon the fight, so break it down. Man, I thought that was more exciting than the fight, actually. Um, I heard this pretty decent hip hop tune come blasting out of the speakers, and I was like, oh shit, Wilder's gonna come in, you know, all fucking hyped up. And then I see this, these feathers and, and this really gay looking fucking gold bronze mask. And I'm like, and this, this crown, like, what is he supposed to be? I still don't understand the concept of it, but I guess we'll get to that later. It's, uh, Wilder has, for such a violent, like, puncher who tries to be very intimidating, like, he's got a really fruity sense of fashion and image, but, um, all right, let's talk a bit about the fight, man. Like, it was um, it was better than I expected. Let me just say right off the bat. Um, I really enjoyed it. There was a sort of tension in the air as it was going on from the first round to the last round. Um, even the rounds where there wasn't a lot of activity, I was still very much glued to the screen because I felt like any given moment shit could kick off, and it did. Um, let me start with Tyson Fury, man. I thought, and I've talked a lot of shit about I said over the last few months, probably years, actually. Uh, and I still, you know, withhold that criticism towards him. But I thought he looked really good. I thought his movement was uh, good in the sense that it wasn't excess. You know, he wasn't moving that much like against Klitschko, for example. He kind of stood right around that mid-range uh, in front of Wilder, which I'll get to that later a bit as well. I thought it was a bit surprising sometimes because I know Fury can be a decent inside fighter, and he's probably a little bit safer up close, you know, as opposed to that mid-range where Wilder can really start wailing those shots in. But he stood right there. He had good defense. He used a lot of feints. Um, The jab was decent, not as active as I thought it would be, but effective, very much effective. And, man, I thought the revelation for me for Tyson Fury in this fight was the right hand. I thought it was very fucking crisp. I thought it was very straight and it was fast. And honestly, I thought he could have knocked Wilder out with it. If he committed a little bit more to it, I think Fury has decent power. I think, I just think he chooses not to really commit to his punch off. And you can kind of see it in the way that he uh, throws it. He pulls the punches a little bit. He has good technique, like he puts the shoulder into it, but he doesn't really commit 100%, you know, and just really, really plants his feet. He had a couple of moments in this in the fight where he actually, you know, put some medium power on it, and you could see the effect. Like, he, I think I think he buzzed uh, Wilder a few times, who's now proven to have actually a pretty good chin. Um, Wilder, on the other hand, I thought a few times that he chose to use it, um, he had a good jab. I thought he had a solid jab, actually, but he rarely fucking used it, and he got away from it. I think in, like, the fourth or fifth round, he actually busted Fury's nose up a little bit, and it started, um, as Mauro Ranello said, leaking like political documents. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that meant, but okay. That's what the, mu- the Mueller, That's the, the Mueller report, isn't it? That's all the um, shit that's going on in the States, looking right, into Trump, is- the Russians. Yeah, I know, but he's just absolutely terrible. Anyway, um, and but the thing is about Wilder, again, I, I have to give the dude credit as well because he's very crude, but because he's so wild and unorthodox and just throws these fucking haymakers all the time, eventually he has to land. And there's two things I want to point out here. One is, obviously, he doesn't he- need to hit you clean, right? He can hit you on top of the head and scra- scramble your brain, and then he fucking hurts you and drops you. That that can happen. However, I think that's what happened, if I remember correctly, on the first knockdown. Second knockdown, he actually finally adjusted his punches because every time he would throw the right hand, Fury would do that little dip to the side, right? And instead of throwing it straight for the fucking head, he threw the right hand a little bit downwards to the left to meet Fury's head where it was going. And that happened in the 12th round. So I was like, fuck me, he finally did it. And I must say, the way he followed it up with the left hook afterwards was very fucking crisp. That combination was fire. Like, he 
he can actually do it. You know, like that's the weird thing. But he just chooses to, to really throw like these wild fucking shots with poor technique, sometimes slapping as well. So it's a little bit strange. Man, I, um, in terms of scoring the fight, like, just to wrap up this, this fucking ramble, is um, I would definitely say Tyson Fury won the fight. Like, I watched it again today, flying back to uh, Abu Dhabi, and Fury really, really, you know, dominated just the overall sense of the fight, you know? Like, he, he basically made it his fight, and he fought his own type of style, he outboxed him, and Wilder just didn't get a lot of shots in. There were a few times in the earlier rounds where I thought maybe Wilder could have nicked it just based on, you know, the visual aspect of him throwing punches, and it looks like he's landing, but he's not really landing. And Fury was effective. I would have liked to see a little bit more activity from Fury. Like I said before, I think he could have hurt Wilder. Honestly, there were openings at one point when Wilder got a little desperate. He could have fucking really thrown a hard counter right, and yeah, there were some missed opportunities there, but yeah, that, that's that's pretty much uh, what I think. What about you, Leon? Um, yeah, I thought it was really, especially after about round five, it really got got going. I mean, there's the, it did have that big fight tension that you know you only get with the really big fights, but I found those first four rounds really tough to score. So when I first watched it live. Admittedly, just on an iPad, like, you know, in bed, you know, cause it's on so late. I had it to Ice, Wilder by Ice one. Fuck, probably. <laughs> no, 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 no. Those, that, no, those days are behind me or kind of put on hold. Um, so I had it to Wilder by one, which seemed to cause uproar when it heard where I meant <laughs> no, it. No, to. you were definitely <laughs> high. No, you were definitely high. Yeah, I'm probably, I was a little, I've been at the, yeah, I was a little, I've been at the boxing drinking. I've been at that Goodwin show at, Beth, at York Hall before, so yeah. Um, I, f- I found it definitely was 100%. York Hall, mate, I love it. Yes, you geezer. Um, I still think those first four, like, they're really nip and tuck, so I wouldn't argue if people gave one to Wild, you know. So I gave him the second and the fourth and the two knockdowns. Um just because the second and fourth, I could have given him the first and Tyson the second. I don't, you, it's really like the fight didn't start to the fifth fight. No, you can, really. you, I totally 100% agree that you can rearrange those first four easily because large chunks of the rounds, there was not much happening. Like they were posturing and gesturing quite a bit. They would kind of faint the jabs. But like I actually counted in one, I think it was the, the second, there was like 60 seconds where either guy didn't really throw a punch. Yeah, exactly. So they're difficult, mm. like. I find it really tough. Like my my problem with all of this is, and I think I was having an argument with um, Bill, our friend Bill, not not New Zealand Bill, West Ham Bill. Like I, my my problem with things with these kind of rounds, when you have an aggressive fighter versus a supposed defensive fighter, if nothing happens all the credit goes to the defensive fighter, right? In generally, right? That's that, my feeling. I, I think that's a problem because you, do you want people just nicking belts mm. by stealing rounds? Oh, this thing that we've all complained about for years about German fighters going to Germany. Like, I just think it's really tough. Just, yeah, yeah. Wilder is crude and he, he is... You know, he doesn't look good. And Tyson was doing a, a reasonable job. But he wasn't styling on him in those first four rounds. Like, the activity wasn't high enough. Yeah. I agree with that. The activity wasn't high so enough where you could say, tough, oh, it's a tough. clear, clear fucking dominant round. Like, right? well, was, were... But you take my point, though. Like, it's very... People fall into that trap of giving it to the defensive fighter because not much has landed. Like, suddenly, he's done all the thing. But I... I and you know my problem. I, I have a problem with defense. I, I, defense is an important thing, but I, I'm always going to. I'm always leaning the other way, especially in this day and age. I'm always going to lean the other way. But so that's where I got to. But it being two two after four. But after, I mean, after five, five, six, seven, eight, even nine. Now he was schooling him, and he was styling on him, 
And I, I think there's an argument. Well, I don't know if this is full frotch, but there's an argument that that 12th is a 9-9. <laughs> Not a, not a ten eight, right? Like, because I think Tyson won that round. He came I back. Think, I think he won it after he got knocked down. Yeah, he he, he fucking came back. He, he came, he, he came back, so. but I can't. He, I can't give a nine nine for that type no, of you round. Can't, to me. can't. No, you can't. But I'm saying there's an argument. No. that he still won more rounds. Fury, like he buzzed him in that round, didn't he? In that twelfth, he did. It caught him with a did. little. Punch. And he buzzed him. I think it was a combination but, of him being buzzed, and then he kind of gassed a bit as well, because um, he because yeah. he went for the kill. Um, but yeah, he definitely he, Fury definitely came back. I think, and I, I think so that first round actually, I think about he caught him with a little right hand at the end of it, didn't he? And that kind of just for a second did something to Wilder. And but yeah, no, it was a fantastic fight. And I'm not, I'm not a big lover of heavyweight boxing, but that had that big time thing about it and the, the other takeaway for me is like that made an impact a genuine impact on the sporting sport in the uk he's still on the front page of the bbc i judge him think like a, a casual sports person will always go to the bbc website right it's, it's the most up to date it's got like you know it's the go-to place that was from sunday to to almost now had at least one Tyson Fury story on Sunday. It had about five or six different articles. Like it made an impact. So AJ needs to think about himself because like he did that Klitschko thing and that was great, but there was something extra special about that world of like atmosphere wise. And I was surprised Leon, how good the atmosphere was in that arena. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I honestly didn't expect that, but then again, there were a shitload of Brits there as well, right? It seemed it was yeah. just rowdy. It, it had it had a certain vibe to it where people knew that something was going to go down, you know. And yeah. the crowd was invested in the fight. You could hear the reactions to certain punches, you know. I think everybody was kind of on the same page, and they were expecting, you know, something to detonate in the ring. And it figuratively did. speaking, of course, you know. Yeah, but the other thing is like. There's a, an article on the BBC website now where you see the ref getting lots of grief saying he missed a count. And he says a really interesting thing, right? This is what the ref that he says. I thought this was really interesting. Sorry, let me find it. He was kind of saying a 10 count is almost... No, I'm going to get the exact quote. <laughs> oh, it disappeared. I can't find it. He said it's a 10 count, not a 10 second count. You know what I mean? So it's his pace of 10. It's his judgment of 10. So it's not an actual second. I, I don't get the difference. What do you mean? No, no, no. But it's his, I don't know. I, I think he means it's like he's got a little bit of leeway in that count. He counts in doing it like his at pace. The, his oh, that, pace, that, that, that the speed he that he sees. counts it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what I he's... Don't know. Mate, to be honest, I completely ignore that entire fucking storyline because I I just didn't care. It was a great fight, and why would I get into this bullshit about a ten count or whatever? I'm glad that Fury got up, but the, and that's it. Like I don't, yeah, I, I really don't give a shit. The ref said he could see he still had something in him. That's why he let him get up. That's why he left it as long as possible because he could judge. He said if he got to five and that got and he thought he was completely gone, he would have. He might oh, have off. oh, in that sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Sometimes you see, again, there's a good point. Sometimes you see refs, when somebody gets knocked out cold, um, they just, they just, st- they, don't, they don't even count. They just, just like straight away, they wave it off and the doctors come in the ring, right? Just not to waste time and immediately attend to the fighter. Here, you could make a case that, fuck, from, from a visual perspective, like he looked out. He looked fucking blasted, like Amir Khan style. And he just, I don't know, like just recovered and got off. It's really- fucking incredible how he did it you know he just he just i mean the undertaker memes are, are fantastic but it was literally like that like he just came back to life um but i don't know i didn't really see anything wrong with the count man I really no 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 here's what he said he goes he took like he's saying he, he took his time he was patient he made the best decision for boxing not for the fighters that's what the ref is saying like you've i've got to make a gut decision 
and try and give everyone as much time as possible so the right decision is made for boxing. So if it ends up being ten and a half seconds, like, do we care really? Mm. Not ten, you know what I mean? Like, I think he made well, the right that, decision, didn't he? He made the right decision to let him carry well, on. That, that I don't agree with though. Like ten is ten. Right? You cannot no, 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 ten no. pause. You know what I mean? Like it, ten is fucking ten. If you if you've counted it a little slower because it's a real time thing, right? It's not a stopwatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair exactly. enough. Fair yeah, enough. I mean, that's what I mean. A real time. His ten might be ten and a half, but it's his ten. He's in the ring making the decisions. I, I think you can get nitpicky though, because for me, Jack Reese before this fight, like, has been the best referee in boxing he's, for yes, the last best couple best. Of years. Um, mm-hmm. A funny thing happened right at the start of the fight. I think someone in Wilder's team was talking while he was trying to give instructions before the fight started. And he was like, hey, shut up, man. Stop talking. Um, that was the Fury, actually, Cam. That was the Fury. Fury was talking smack and he was like, shut the fuck up when I'm talking. Oh, my <laughs> bad. Anyway, but um, yeah, Scores messaged me at the time and he goes, oh, this ref's going to ruin this fight. I said, he's not, man. He's, he's the best ref in the, in the industry, in my opinion. And it turned out to be correct. And for me, this whole counting thing, I think it's just people reaching, man. It's like, why do you have to let little niggly things that like ruin the outcome of a good fight it was a draw a lot of people had fury winning it um but if you think about it both are going to benefit hugely by it being a draw um yeah so tyson I, didn't look tyson didn't look like a beaten man at nine seconds or whatever nine, the nine count did he he was up no, he was just he just he wasn't a beaten guy and then if you want to staggering if, around if you want to get nitpicky like people can complain about these new steps that have come in afterwards where they ask him to walk left and then walk right to see how they're going to react. I know New York State Commission have got um, uh, doctors looking at um, fighters just before round start. when they've uh, Round eight, isn't it? Round eight, is it? No, no, like they can bring him any time if they feel like uh, someone's took a lot of punishment before the round starts, they, they, they get uh, the doctors to look at him so like you could say that's unfair advantage for me i think the amount of time fury got was absolutely fine um yeah because look he asked him to walk walk back and then walk back to him if he had stumbled around he would have called it off wouldn't he yeah exactly yeah. and, yeah. and it yeah. shows yeah, that yeah, jack yeah. knows the industry as well because he knows how big of a fight this is like paulie mentioned that he says like a lot of refs would have just waved that off straight away um, yeah, Brit- the way he's lying. A, yeah, a British ref would have just panicked. Like, no imagine problem. Ian John Lewis. <laughs> imagine Ian John Lewis at that situation. Like, he would have just waved it off, and and we would have missed the ending of a great fight. You know what I mean? And possibly a rematch. And we got that because of Jack Reese. Yeah. Ian John Lewis would have waved it off in the first knockdown. Like, yeah, exactly. That yeah. guy is fucking trash. Yeah. It was a great, like, that's it. The story is, it's a great story in general from, but, you know, I, I think personally, like, I know Wild, there's this idea that Wilder got exposed or, but Wild has been outboxed numerous times. Like, that shit happened. But you've got hey. to credit him, man. Like, till the last round, he carries power in both hands. It was round four where he busted his nose with a jab, um, chemo. And if he'd used that a bit more, I think he could have done. He could have won. He could have won a lot of those early rounds with a bit more work and a touch more accuracy with his jab. But he neglected it, didn't he? You know. You know what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put on my cam hat and I'm going to suggest something. I think Wilder needs a new trainer, and I think he needs somebody like an Emmanuel Stewart, rest in peace, who will focus on the basics. And just make you a very, very effective fighter at one particular thing. And Wilder doesn't need a lot. He no, just, just needs need, if he had a jab. Mate, if he if 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 this motherfucker gets a good trainer who hammers into his fucking head a good one one two, you know, fucking double jab, triple jab, whatever it is, mix it up a little bit, but work on that fucking right hand and become disciplined at doing it. In a fight, I don't know how he looks in sparring and, and on the pads, you know what I mean? I've seen him on the pads, actually, and it looks weird. But, like, he needs to just crisp up that, that, that right hand, man. Like, when he throws it in the right way, there's so much more potential. And I thought the commentary as well mentioned it during the fight. I think Al Bernstein was correctly saying, like, his left hook is not bad. And the skill it took to hit, hit a falling fury, basically, with a fast left hook while he's going down... Man, that takes skill. Like that means you have a good fast reaction with the left hook. And there's potential there, man. There's potential. I know the guy started late, but 
there is really no excuse at this point to throw these wild fucking punches, man. Like he just, I, I think he's I don't almost, know. It's almost like he does certain things well, but they just don't connect that well. Do you know what I mean? Kimo, they I, don't, I actually they don't dis- relate to each other that well. I actually disagree with you putting my hat on because I think it's too late for Wild. I think he, he is what he is. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's not going to change now. Like even if he went with a new trainer and really. Um, had multiple camps. I can't really see him changing his technique now. Like he's, it's too late for him personally. There was, I don't think there it's too late. How old is he? How old is he? Thirty-three. I don't think it's too late. He's a heavyweight man. He's he's yeah. still got a few years, a few good years in him. I don't think it's too late. There was a there was one round where he he kind of tri- tripled up his jab, and I was like, oh wow, that if he was doing that more often, like because it. It made Tyson work a bit and you had to get out of the way. I mean, it didn't all land, but it was making Tyson, that's the most uncomfortable he looked I'd seen, I thought, until he got knocked down. And it's just like, well, he can do it. He's just not thinking in there. Yeah, he can, man. He's got those long levers, doesn't he? And he can, yeah. he can do it, man. Like, honestly, he's got the range. He's got the frame for it. Like, he should not be throwing... I mean, at one point, it was literally like he was throwing a cricket ball, you know, like all the way from Bowling, the top. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it was like all the way from the top it was coming. And Fury was, I mean, it's so easy to defend for him, you know what I mean? Like if you disguise that right hand a little bit, switch up the jab, you know, work on a jab to the body, start start feigning as well with the left hook a little bit. Because you see, this is something, for example, that Tyson Fury does, and it's a classic boxing move, right? And a lot of guys do this very well. And it's you throw a left hook, but you don't throw it to land the left hook. You throw it with to set up the right hand. Yes, yeah, like it's, it's it's a classic move that so many fighters do. And and Wilder he didn't really do it, you know. I, I maybe I saw him try it once, but I've seen Fury, and they show one good replay where Fury, I think he throws a left hook off of a double jab, and then he gets the right hand in straight on the chin, you know, like. If, if if Fury had more power, he could have, he could have knocked Wilder the fuck out. He really he really had a few potentials there, man. But yeah, yeah what yeah. was the oh, Cam? Why don't you uh, tell a bit more about how you uh, saw the fight, man? Yeah, really enjoyable. I do think, as I mentioned earlier, the first maybe four uh, pace was slow, both were gesturing a lot. But um, and as Leon says, that like, you can kind of mix and match those rounds. I had two each going into the fifth, but yeah. Fury kind of did take over. Um, obviously, without uh, mentioning knockdown rounds, the rest of them were really all Fury. Um, and even in the knockdown rounds, he he came back. He caught Wilder. He started putting pressure on Wilder. It's not like he just tried to survive the round and um, you know try and get out the r- round alive. He he kept fighting back, man. And he, as much criticism as I've given him, you know, maybe for the last couple of years, you know, I said uh, I think in the summer, you know come back when you've actually lost the weight and actually fighting someone decent and and, and, and he has man like okay that first warm up tune up fight was horrible the second one wasn't really great but for him to have you know that much inactivity uh, balloon up to that much weight and actually come back and fight one of the top guys in the division you know you, you got to give him his credit and it's not like um, he was outclassed anything. he held his own and most people thought he won the fight which I did I had it 1-14-1 uh, twelve. Um, yeah, same as me. I, I wanted to I ask, like, are you guys happy with the draw? Um, like, if if it, the, the one scorecard one thirteen, one thirteen. Me personally, yeah, I'm happy, Leon. Are you, would you be angry if like majority oh, look, of people gave that fight a draw? I don't. I think Tyson won it, but I'm I'm not bothered about the draw because I don't particularly like either of them so i don't really have a dog, <laughs> in, the, dog in the race i've realized i don't think i like many boxes <laughs> recently but um so i think it's good for boxing because i think they're a great they work off each other really well and i really hope that they do sort out a rematch and if not they've got to be fighting good guys but that's always going to be there people are always going to be intrigued by this fight from now on they both i think they both did a really good job it was you know they put their money where their mouth is. They fought the best guys they could, and that you know. And I think he's they've shown the way that you know. AJ might think he's 
he holds all the cards, but he needs one of these two well, guys. Yeah, I, I want to get proved it. They are the partner. I nothing do... else. No, nothing else will do. Like, he can have another couple of fights, but I do want to get to make that. this decision. I do want to get into that, but um, Kimo quickly. Obviously, there's that horrible wide card for Wilder, but uh, Bad card. Same question to you. Like, would you be happy if uh, majority of people who watched that fight scored it a draw, or do you think it should have been a clear win for Fury? I'm a little bit like Leon in that sense where I thought Fury honestly won the fight and, you know, for what it's worth, you know, quote unquote, a clear decision. I thought that's my take on it, but I don't know, for some reason it didn't make me upset. I was just like, oh, it's a draw. Okay, whatever. Cool. Like I'm, I'm done over getting really, really upset about decisions, <laughs> yeah. about decisions me where too. like nobody's really, let me put it this way. These guys made a lot of money in this fight and they will continue to make a lot of money in the future and none of them really lost because it's a drop, right? So I'm not really that upset about it. Like if 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 Fury lost, I would be a lot more upset. That's exactly what I was gonna say. If it'd been two yeah. times to water, then I, I think everyone had every right to be livid. Yeah, but because Fury because Fury, yeah. well. Fury said it himself as well, like, yeah, okay, I don't agree with the decision. And, you know, surprisingly unfury like he was very classy about everything. And he's like, you know, I'm not coming out of this fight a loser. I've proven to myself what I can do. And, you know, he's only going to go up from here and Wilder is going to go up from here. Both guys now have the opportunities to make massive fights. Right. So I'm not I'm not really upset about it, man. Honestly, I don't think it's a, a massive travesty. I obviously disagree with the decision, but. It's not something where, you know, we're going to run around and be like, oh, it's a, it's a travesty on the sport. Like, for example, the scorecard, you know, that bitch that had fucking Canelo over Floyd. Like, that is that was so blatant bullshit. Like, I cannot deal with that. But this is like, eh, you know, OK, whatever. Um, both guys came out good. And we're hopefully going to see either AJ against Wilder or AJ against Fury and just Mix the three up. This is the first time in a long time that we actually have a heavyweight division that's putting on entertaining fights. And, yeah, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it. I, I don't really have much to complain about, man. The fight exceeded my expectations. And whenever that happens, I, I, I'm not going to get upset. I'm really not. No, that, that's a great point because, like, up until the fight itself, I wasn't really into it. A lot of the times I watch all the build-up shows and the all accesses and that, and I don't really watch anything because after that first press conference, it just seemed so corny because you could tell both guys get on. They even mentioned it afterwards that, like, they're cool with each other. So any kind of dramatics, you just know it's fake, man. Uh, and to me, it's that's WWE. I don't watch boxing for all that fakeness. Like, we came, I think... Um, did you read that Hay came out afterwards and said uh, all that stuff with Bellie was all, like... Just bullshit. Yeah. And like, well, we knew that anyway, but the fact that you're doing that, you're just conning the public, aren't you, really? For me. Yeah. Like, you're blagging it. All that build up and all that bullshit is fake. So, anyway, um, Kimo, you mentioned but... a good thing about Wilder and, and, um, Joshua, and the real winner for me <laughs> in this fight is Team Hearn and Team Joshua, because if you think about the overall landscape now is they've benefited the most because Wilder's name recognition is higher. He's drawn, so he's still got his belt. Only thing maybe is they'll have to pay him a bit more than before. But I think they've benefited the most because that his style for Joshua is better than Fury's style. So they're not going to go near Fury. That fight's harder to make anyway because of Hearn and um, Warren. It's so, high. Yeah, so... Really, Eddie needs to get that Wilder fight signed, sealed, delivered for April now. Cause that he, if he doesn't get that fight, he's missed a big trick for me. That's what Let I was going to say. This... That's what I was going to say. Yeah, Cam, go on, go on. That you you have a point that they've come out of it, but are they capable? Do they have the magnet? Magne- uh, I'll, I'll use another word. Is, are they kind of like humble enough? Like they like that word to give up a bit to get it done. Will they be able to fully take advantage of this? I don't think Hearn can help himself but to kind of push things and try and take stuff off people and just fuck with things. I don't think he gets it done. 
Would, would I think, think this is what I think can. I think in the short term, um, people will consider it a kind of a loss for the AJ camp because of how he looks now, right? So everybody's like, oh, AJ didn't want to take the fight. Frank Warren is talking shit. You know, like, look at these two guys. Fury came out of being a fat fuck to fighting Wilder. He did something that AJ wouldn't do. That's the short term perspective. The longer term perspective is exactly like you said. Fury's name has absolutely skyrocketed again, right? He already had notoriety before, but people didn't take him seriously. Now everybody's taking him seriously. He is a very, you know, promotable guy. He did fantastic. I think a Fury um, AJ fight is absolutely fucking massive now. I think it's it's humongous. I think it will do record number of pay-per-views in the UK. I, th- mm-hmm. I think, honestly, that might be one of the biggest pay-per-views ever in the UK. It'll be like, the biggest. It'll be the biggest. Probably the biggest ever, done. right? I mean, yeah. AJ is already, already a legendary star in terms of his drawing power, but you put these two fucking guys together, and I think there's so much money in this now, it will get made. It, it, Cam, it's absolutely huge, and Fury has now also made a name in the US. They can put that shit on Sky pay-per-view. They can add it on Showtime pay-per-view. I think it's going to get fucking shitload of buys. And if, 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 if honestly either of those two guys, and I'm talking about Fish Eyes and, uh, and uh, Fast Eddie, if either of those guys let their egos get in the way of making this, they're just retarded because they claim to be about the money. And there is so much money in this now. Like it, the, 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 a little measly split argument isn't going to make a difference because compared to before, there's so much more money in it, man. Honestly, I think I may be talking out of my ass, but this is at least 40% more lucrative than it was before. Maybe even 50% more. Like it, it's, 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 it's going to blow up like crazy now, man. Yeah. And the other thing is like now, if I was them, they've got, they've got to see that like AJ taking a loss to one of these guys wouldn't harm them. They've got, there's, five fights in it isn't there there's a rematch versus wilder wilder fury there's aj versus wilder and the rematch there's aj versus tyson and the rematch like yeah. that's they're the five fights that now matter in the heavyweight and the game thing- unless uzik does yeah. something comes up and is, is great brilliant but that they're all money fights all of those are money fights he and the thing is be feeding on any of these other guys anymore that's that's four, that's three years work there. And the thing is, Leon also like uh, if he fights Fury, like it's very unlikely that Fury will knock out AJ. So worst case scenario, you get a you get a situation where you know Fury wins a decision, but you know I can imagine that AJ can at least make it competitive. You know? So there's oh, always impressive. there's there's always a chance for a rematch. And it's just too big now, man. Like, you can't avoid this anymore. Like, it's a huge, huge fight. And I think Wilder is obviously still in the mix as well. I don't know how popular he is now in the U.S. after this. Um, but I, I think Fury AJ is where it's at, man. I but, think but, I think this is an incredible fight. But, Fury, but Wilder versus AJ is good. I know everyone says he gets, like, he batters Wilder. That seems, everyone I've mentioned is even. But I'm... Like you said, it doesn't take much. His cuffing shots are, are power, are like AJ's power shots, aren't they? Really, that he's, and not like AJ's got a super amount of head movement. No. <laughs> so, so that Wilder thing is still like AJ could be beating him for six rounds, and then he gets a little tired. You're telling me there's no chance Wilder lands something on him? There's every chance. I mean, I think that's a really good fight. I mean, it might be a bit more scrappy. And what, and, but the good thing is someone might get knocked out very, very early. Someone might get knocked out very, very late. But someone will get knocked out. I think AJ Wilder is the more exciting fight if you just compare the styles because they will fucking throw down and somebody will get knocked the fuck out. Like, I, I, I don't see that honestly going the distance. I don't know how. Wilder is aggressive enough and he's open enough for AJ to get, to get his work in. You know, like he's not going to bitch out like a fucking... Dominic Brazil or whatever like he'll, he'll come to knock AJ out and AJ is a dog like if you want to make a fight with AJ he will oblige he's not gonna fucking try to box he can't you know like yeah, he's yeah. too stationary he doesn't have enough head movement and he's got the dog in him and we saw what happened with White 
And there's now so much tension about this fight as well that I, I think it's going to be a scrap. So, man, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about this shit. I just hope there's no promotional nonsense that's going to get in the way. There will be. They'll but, fuck it. Watch it. They will yeah, fuck it somehow. We, it may, but I hope we don't get a pack fucking May situation. I honestly don't hope be, so because... It will be down to the TV deals. That's, where, that's, that's the honest truth. That, that's the thing that will happen. Whose pay-per-view channel is it on? Mate, just put it on the zone, mate. That's what we got to do. Just make a five hundred million. The home of Triple G. Deal. The home. <laughs> no, but it's uh, it's 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 exciting times for the heavyweight division, and uh, yeah, man, I'm uh, fucking pumped for it. Honestly, um, I wanted to mention one other thing. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask you, Leon. After after everything that's transpired, and and you and I both have shat on fucking Fury so many times. How do you view him now? Have you, do you have a bit more respect for him now? Now that he's oh, actually like, come back I, and the way he looked? I've always... I picked him to beat Vlad. I always knew he was really, really good. I just think he's full of bullshit. Like that, mm-hmm. That's the truth. And I'm not... I don't give a shit what anyone says. Like, because if... Like, I know enough fucked up people who are, like, proper alcoholics and have been through it, and they aren't wandering around after a fight with a fucking glass of fucking whiskey in their hand. Do you know what I mean? Because then mm-hmm. you'll spiral off. So all of that stuff, like, so if he's a depressed alcoholic cokehead, then I'd say ninety percent, ninety percent of my mates are then. Do you know what I mean? Like, because <laughs> honestly, so I don't buy any of that shit. Don't care about any of that shit. I think it's all nonsense. I try to watch. The, I try to listen to that Joe Rogan fucking podcast. It, I mean, Rogan is a special kind of moron. I didn't know that was what he was like. <laughs> <laughs> like, he is a fucking idiot. That, I mean, if you're listening to that on a regular basis, you need to find something else to do with your time. And I just didn't buy a fucking word of it, personally. But that's just me. Maybe I'm just too cynical. But as a fighter, I've always thought, thought he was good. And, I, you know, I like him. But, you know, but some of his fans are nuts. And some of his fans say, you know, oh, he definitely had mental... You know, we've got to believe him about his mental health issues. Fine. But then you can't pick and choose and then go... Well, actually, he was, he was out. The thing, those anti-Semitic things he said, they were taken out of context, so he doesn't really believe it. It's like, well, he can't pick and choose. He's either a guy with mental health issues who doesn't like gay people and hates Jews, or he's a liar. That, that's, my, <laughs> that's my point. I think, I think Fury is a... Uh, Set me up to do that, you fucker. Yeah, of course. Like, we have yeah. to talk about it. But the thing is, like, for me... Uh, and again, this may be very judgmental because I don't know the guy, but he strikes me as somebody who needs to create uh, like a, a motivation in his own head. And the Furies love a victim role. Like they always come from the underdog position. Somehow they seem to think that they thrive under that sort of environment. And, like a and bit of chaos. Like, they love a bit of chaos, don't they? They love chaos. They love, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I hate to say it, but it might be a little bit of it of a gypsy mentality. I really don't know, but like they, they always want to come from the underdog thing and uh, it's always them against the world. And, you know, maybe, maybe Fury, now that he won the title, like he needed another thing to motivate himself. And he basically self sabotaged his own fucking career to come back. And now it's this whole thing about, I'm an ambassador for mental health, you know, and whatever may I like, I'm just going to ignore it from now on, but if that's what it takes for him to at least be active in the sport, so fucking be it. Like, honestly, like, like, I don't, I don't really care anymore, but as long as he stays active in his own words, like without boxing, I, I, I will spy, I will go down a downward spiral. You know, what, mate, if that, if that's what it takes, whatever. I just, yeah, want like, to I'm just going to say, because you're a good fighter. And I like I said, I do say that with, from some place of ha- having experienced the, that kind of stuff. My best friend was a heroin addict. One of my best friends was a heroin addict for 15 years. I've seen what a depressed junkie looks like. Like, mm. I've been around that stuff. I'm not, and it's not a sob story. Like, that I know because he, he's still my best friend. He was my best, best man at my wedding. I've seen what it really looks like. And I've made him listen to that Joe Rogan, Rogan thing. And he, this guy is a bright guy. He's not like some, yeah, he's a bright, and he said, nah, it's bullshit. That, nah, he's, he's not. A, he's not an alcoholic or a, an, an addict. No, didn't didn't buy one second of it. There you go. At the end, but at the end he of looked the, great, yeah. didn't he? He looked fucking brilliant in the ring, and the fight was great. So the other stuff really doesn't matter. Apart from we, one thing, I also wanted to mention, guys, is like I, I'm 
I'm surprised the difference of the Tyson Fury of the last fight and this fight. Like, I rarely see fighters that just have a night and day difference in between one fight. Like, it's it's just incredible. Like, he hit the, the, the sharpness and the, the speed of his punches are not even comparable. It's like almost a different guy. Like, when he fought that other fucking taxi driver, I forgot his name, like, he looked slow. He looked... His punches all look like arm the punches. Shit treacle technique. punches. Yeah, weak. Like, his defense was shit. And here, he was fast. He was fast. He was crisp. You know, he was moving well. He was in much better shape. And by the way, Fury, make no mistake, was in very good shape for this fight. That stuff around his waistline, that's not fat, mate. That's flesh because he just ballooned up to, like, 400 pounds. And he's always going to have that excess skin. And right? he's never a ripped guy. Never been. No, I don't no, think no. He could but, get it there, could yeah. he? But he cannot get rid of that unless he does like a surgery because he, when you get that fat, man, you just have that excess skin. You're, you're going to keep it. But you, when you look at his back, when you look at his legs and everything, his arms, like he was in really, really good shape, man. And uh, was he ever tired in the fight? No. Like he was, he was always, Wilder was the one who was huffing and puffing a little bit. Fury was in tremendous shape. And he's got that little bit of uh, James Tony in him where he's always relaxed, like, Nothing really gets forced, so he doesn't really get tired either. So I, yeah, I, I gotta say, Wilder was yeah. anxious. Wilder fought anxious. I thought, like, well, he he felt it slipping away yeah. from him at one point, yeah. and that's when he started forcing shit. Right, that's when he started swinging and and really, really getting tense punches off, and that's when you get tired, man. That's 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 one of the most tiring things you can do in boxing. Yeah, that's one thing I did want to mention earlier. Before the fight, I was worried that. Maybe Fury, as he did to Vlad, would make Wilder a bit gun shy and make him uh, his output drop, and it did to an extent because they were talking about punch figures and they're saying he was throwing a lot less than he usually throws in fights. But um, I, th- I think Wilder got to a point where he just had to start throwing, even though he was missing, and um, Fury was making him kind of look bad with uh, some of uh, the wild shots. And Fury was kind of just, you know, bobbing and weaving and coming underneath. Doing, I think, towards the end of one round, near the end, I think he was kind of matrixing him. And uh, yeah, man, he, he, he made Wilder look, look like a clown at times. But, well, I wouldn't go that far, Cam. I think that's a little harsh. I think, no, I, I think, think he Wilder did was, in those, think those five, six, seven. That middle bit, he 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 made him look bad. I think. Yeah, to me, it, if, exposed, if, if Wilder's four and one two all the time, and um. Not adjusting to maybe like Kimo said earlier when he got the the, the knockdown in twelve to kind of lower the shot and throw the shot where Fury's gonna where he's gonna be opposed to where he is at that time when he starts to throw the punch, then you know like you're a clown man because you, if you're in a professional box and you've got forty plus fights and you can't even make it, he made the adjustment right at the end of the fight like the the, the knockdown in the tenth. It was kind of like, you know, a barrage of punches and one caught Fury on top of the head while he was kind of off balance. And it wasn't it wasn't a great knockdown because as Fury got up, you could see he wasn't clearly hurt. So it took Wilder 12 rounds to adjust to throw a punch, man. Like, that, that's pretty basic for me. Cam, and also you're, you you keep an eye on this stuff. I didn't, I didn't really notice it and I wish I had. What was Wilder's corner like? Because it didn't seem like there was any kind of real kind of zip like right we're in fucking trouble here i couldn't really hear mark breeland i could hear the other guy because he kind of like got two trainers the, the white dude that looks like chip foos for anyone knows about american cars in the, in the states but yeah. um it, it, yeah like breeland was kind of giving him advice and then the other dude was just kind of shouting like yeah man you know he, he's not trained in hot alabama man like yeah you know, like he's like he's just trying to motivate him but I'm always a purist for like one voice in the corner. We don't want to yeah. hear too much shit going on. But yeah, I, cu- I couldn't really. They didn't really have the mic that close to Mark Braylon enough for me to pick up what he was saying. Yeah, no, I, I thought that guy, that young guy that we've all mocked just because of that Billy Joe Saunders thing and the couple of fights, for he seemed to be getting some very clear messages across. Yeah, Ben Davis. I think he, seemed to he, de- was, he did do a decent job. Yeah, he I was, think it's very clever getting Freddie Roach in there as well and stuff like that because you need someone. Because Roach, for, for all of his thing, he's a tough bastard, especially like backstage, I imagine, like wrapping hands and all that stuff. He's going to be like on the opposition, right? Like you need someone with that bit of kind of 
nouse about how boxing works in the background. And I think getting him in to do the spit bucket was quite clever, you know. Yeah, they but had it's quite Hatton. strange as well at the same time. Like, yeah. you're going to have Roach carry the fucking bucket? Like, it's a bit weird, right? He must but have he was there for the well. hand trap. He was there for the... He was doing that stuff that his dad did last time. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you can't leave that to a 24-year-old. I agree. Like, yeah. uh, it's wise to bring these kind of people And along. it's also... That's Freddie Roach in the corner who's going, fucking rewrap those hands or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's not just some kid. It's fucking mm. like, that's fucking Freddie Roach. Yeah, and you know, then that's... for experience, they had Hatton in the corner as well. Uh, yeah. and, and to your point, I, I thought Ben Davidson was clear. Uh, he was calm. He was giving him like enough instruction, but you know, not barraging him with like 10 different things to kind of work on in the next round. Like, I hate when people give like so many things to do. It's like, yo, man, trying to you know grab a breath here and drink some water and you're just telling me a million things so yeah man we shit on uh, Davidson when he when he was helping Billy Joe out but I think he's kind of uh, he's evolving and getting better yeah fair play to him yeah, yeah you see, I mean you get a lot of these uh, I don't know boxing back in the day used to always have a, a very high value for grey hairs you know what I mean like a, a trainer should always be some old fuck you know who's like 60 years old but you see a lot of these younger guys coming nowadays. Uh, Shane is what is another one where, you know, they might not have that much knowledge as 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 per se of Freddie Rhodes, but they have a certain confidence and attitude where you just get the basics right and you just do you know what your fighter does well and Fury knew what to do from the get go. You just steer him like little bits, little bits and pieces throughout the fight, and you know give him the right advice, keep him calm, and just. You know, keep him confident, and I think he did a terrific job, actually. So, uh, and, but but like um, Shane does it. He's always got what's his name, hasn't he? Jimmy Tibbs with him doing that spit bucket or the cut or something. So you can have an experienced guy there who's sitting with you in the corner who might mm. see something during the rounds and go, you know, have a word before you go in the ring. I, you know, I think I that think balance is a good, is a good thing. Yeah, it's a perfect combination of having like yeah. experience, but then the youth as well. Because I think. To Kimo's part, I think sometimes the older generation can overthink things and sometimes going mm-hmm. into a fight, just, you know, keep it simple, stupid, you know what I mean? Like, why overanalyze shit where maybe more more basic uh, outcome to the fight might work, so... Yeah. Right. Undercard, I didn't watch any of it, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of what those fights there, where you, because... didn't, you didn't need to watch it, did you? It's one of those... Our uh... boy Heard, Heard took a million shots and then knocked out that guy, didn't he? Oh, Cam, we need to talk about that, right? Yeah, Our Kim, boy. Kim, was disappointed, man. Like, Wellborn started so well. He was putting her under pressure, got him on the ropes, throwing like a left uppercut overhand right, you know, landing at times, having success. And then that kind of shot to the solar plexus just iced him, man. And I personally thought he could have got up. He was kind of looking at his corner and he was like grimacing a bit, but it, it seemed like a quit to me. Yeah, it definitely seemed like a quit. I mean,. It... Normally, when somebody gets hit to the body and it's it's a bad body shot, you know, you, you can see visibly the pain that they're in. But he seemed a bit, I don't know, just kind of relaxed and just kind of sat there and like, yeah, you know what, I'm done. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? So, I don't know. Uh, he, again, I find it surprising that he got this fight. I don't really know how the fight got made and why, but... It's not his level, man. Even even though he might have done a little bit okay, like in the beginning, it truth be told, Cam, like Hurd is a very crude guy anyway. So I think a lot of people can look temporarily good against him, but he's not a world level fighter. So yeah, what can I say? I, I'm I'm not hating on him too much because he he did give us a few nice moments and on British soil, but uh, yeah, kind of disappointing. And usually- and I think Hurd. Deserves better fights now. Why is he fighting this guy? Like, come on! I want to see big fights for her. He's an exciting fighter. It seemed like he kind of wanted to test his uh, shoulder after the surgery, so I don't mind it because I, I, Lim criticized me because when I said, you know, if they give her the kind of easy fight, I won't mind. And he's like, why, man? Like, they should be fighting the best guys in the division, which I understand, but Hurd has kind of gone through the gauntlet, so I didn't mind him having a maybe a, a, a tick over fight or a fight to test his shoulder, but. Um, for me, I don't really like rappers bringing people out at fights, but I thought the game actually did a good job. He's quite clear on the mic. <laughs> we were talking about this before because I know Kimo's going to a Nas concert on the weekend, but yeah, a lot of live rap isn't the best, especially when rappers are bringing out boxes. But yeah, man, I thought the game did a good job. 
I didn't. Wait, I didn't even see that. By the way, maybe your uh, I, thingy didn't have the ring walks in it. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need to go fucking go back and watch that, man. I've seen the get. What's so it was the game? Fucking hell! He came I'm out to dreams. Fan, I had dreams a fucking R and B bitch like Maya. <laughs> May, I mean, I tell you what, the game is an underrated live MC. Even though he does this weird shit where he drinks like a fucking Hennessy ball in one go and then fucks off. <laughs> like when he's actually sober, he's a good live MC. Yeah, but man. then like, like ah. what if you're not lucky and you get the game that's an alcoholic, man? Like you just spent like fifty, sixty pounds on a, on, on a ticket and the guy's terrible. Which happened to me, by the way, in Amsterdam. Like I went to go see him and the, the, the show was forty minutes, and then he downed a bottle with a fan. They both did it. And the fan got fucking sick straight away and collapsed. And then he he mumbled, uh, rapped a little bit, and then he fucking left. So. Big spazzy juice head, not for me. Yeah, mate. I'm you glad you had a shit time. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, okay. Anyway, I need to go back and check that because uh, I, I, I fucks with the game, you know what I'm saying? That's what else it. was on the other card, Cam? Uh, Louis Ortiz beat Travis Kaufman uh, quite easily, man. He did whatever he wanted to, multiple knockdowns, and the uh, ref did a good job stopping it in the tenth because he, Kaufman, like he was a tough dude, but he started to take a bit too much punishment. Mm, I didn't see that shit. Did um, you, Leon? No. Joy Joyce <laughs> stopped Joe Hanks in the first round, so that was all that was televised. I know there were other people on the card, but that's all I saw. Hey, uh, Joe Joyce, the future of uh, British boxing. I, I like Joe Joyce, but he can't talk, man. Like, if you put a microphone in front of him, man, the guy just turns into a big potato. Well, I thought you didn't care about that stuff, Cam. I thought you didn't care about promotion. No, not promotion, but at least be able to, like, put a sentence together. <laughs> because he's got a degree in fine art, so he's, a, you know, he's going to be the scribe, isn't he? Like... <laughs> Has he really got a degree in fine art? You know, they used to have it in the 90s wrestling. They used to have the kind of the well-educated kind of character, didn't they? William Regal, William Regal. Yeah, yeah, that kind of vibe. (laughs) That's his his shit, right? Um, Or like when Hunter first came out and he was the kind of posh guy. Hunter Hearns Helmsley. Wrestling, I should kill myself. Oh, oh, Triple H when he was, yeah, the posh dude. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Did you say Triple H? (laughs) It was Triple H. Oh, I love it. Triple H, mate. Triple G. In HD. <laughs> oh, so are we, are we going to talk about um, Stevenson? Well, yeah, Kim, are you done with this uh, card from LA? Yeah, I just want to shout out the fucking ring walks once again. I thought Free From Desire with uh, fucking Tyson was cool. I love that fucking song. That's the old pillar. Especially, especially, yeah, exactly. Especially when uh, <laughs> I'm a raver, mate. Uh, especially when the crowd starts singing it, man. Like, it's awesome. Man. I love that shit. That is a tune. And, uh, yeah, it is a fucking classic, dude. And and shout out to our boy J Rock, man. Fucking uh, spinning some bars on the walkout with the uh, with with whatever with he, the he was with. with the peacock. With the gay peacock, man. <laughs> I still don't understand. Kim actually thought it was the boxer J-Rock that was going to come out. Yeah, I hadn't seen it yet. People were like, oh, J-Rock, J-Rock. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, J-Rock got knocked the fuck out so badly that he became a rapper? Like, what's (laughs) going on? But uh, So if he got knocked out badly and early, and he became a rapper, what's? I wonder what Lubin's doing now. Ooh, that's cold. cold, He disappeared, didn't he? Where is he, Cam? He's, Where's he's, he hiding? In your fucking basement? No, he, he's he switched tra- trainers now. I think he's uh, he's uh, I can't remember the name of the trainer he's with, but the guy from I think he's from Florida. So, um, oh, let's move on to Stevenson then, Leon. Yeah. G- give us your unbiased, unfiltered opinion. <laughs> oh, God, I can't do that. I'm you know I've got nothing to say about what's happening outside the ring. That's, but I think like that nail did did well, like. So you think? I thought he did really, really well. I mean, he's quite not basic, but he does certain thing. He likes to repeat the same thing quite a lot. But Stevenson was live for about four or five rounds, and I just thought like the nail took over, and that was a brutal stoppage, man. Yeah, he that's was, it? It was. That's it. No other commentary about Stevenson. Well, look, man. I don't. I whoever you are, and whatever you've done in your life. As a fan of sport, I don't like seeing that happen to uh, to the sports person. 
But like, as a human being, I couldn't give a fuck about him. So, yeah, I, I wish it happened. Like, you know, you don't want to see someone. I'd rather he just got gunned down in a drive-by, personally. Like, <laughs> if someone fucking just went out of the back and executed him. Like that, oh, I'd rather oh. that. I'd celebrate that more than this. So you didn't want it to sense. happen in our beautiful ring? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I wanted him brutally iced, and he was, but like, that's still fucked, isn't it? Because boxing looks bad. But, you know, fucking pimped out young girls. I mean, what would he say to, you know, that's him as a person. So I don't cry, shed a tear for, for that, but I shed a tear for the sport. What about you, Kimo? Well... I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in a different route because I think you're being way too politically correct. And you know what I fucking hate, by the way, I hate that everybody. And again, I've said this numerous times, right? It's this, this little PC bitch culture that we have. It's like we all watch a sport where two men get in the ring, or sometimes women, and beat each other's brains in. Right? It's a modern day gladiator. Why is I being PC? Fuck you, man. No, no, not you. Not you in particular. I'm just saying you're holding back a little bit, but that's okay. I am holding back a little bit because, you know, like, yeah. he's still, it's, I don't know what's going on with him, but, you know, I'll be there. I'm popping No, court. but let me, let me, let me finish what I'm going to say. So uh, you get all these people on Twitter saying like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm hearing all these reactions about Stevenson. People should think about, you know, that, that he has a family and da, 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 and da, fuck all that. Seriously. I was happy to see him get fucking smashed. Like I, I, first of all, I don't like the guy as a as a fighter. What he says in the ring, outside of the ring, just I don't fucking like the guy. And if you look at his fucking past as well, I have no issues watching him get smashed into the fucking hospital. I'll say it. People might be fucking pussies and not being able to say it because they think it's a bad thing to say. But you're all watching and you're all hoping that happens. Hey, why, look, do man. Watch, why do you watch boxing? Why do people watch boxing to to, to see Floyd Mayweather? No, no, no. You're watching boxing to see knockouts okay this is why people watch it you want to see action if people are dancing for 12 rounds around each other the crowd boos they want to see blood you got blood and you got a guy who is a typical bad guy yeah get fucking iced so what more do you want i put uh, a smile on my face i'm not oh, gonna lie. i put a smile on my face when it happened like when he was getting knocked around the ring by the nail as it as the fight went on like i no one's I was very, very happy. Like, you know, I don't mm. like that guy, but I, I don't think I don't want to celebrate it happening in the ring. That's my problem. That's all. Like, he's a cunt. Fuck him. Like, I don't have any issue saying that. And I don't give a fuck about his family. I don't know them. Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck about his family. And that kind of shit doesn't. I don't have a family. I chose not to have a family. Like, this is why. Cause even, I don't. Yeah. That's another topic for another podcast. But yeah, I don't give a fuck about that shit, really. Now you now you want me to say it, I couldn't. But like, it's still not good for the sport. That's all I'll say. Like, people who want to take the sport away from us, this is the opportunity they jump on. So again, I'd rather someone just execute him in the street. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just have to give one person like a fucking shout out. And I don't follow this person, but there's some people in my Twitter list that retweet whatever the fuck she's saying, right? And this fucking woman, like this raging babe, in the first she's like tweeting like, Oh my god, I can I cannot wait to watch Steven get Stevenson get knocked the fuck out. And then she's like, Oh my god, I can't believe what people are saying about Stevenson. I'm like, bitch, <laughs> you just fucking wanted his blood and now you are like pulling back and saying, like, oh my god, this is so shocking. Seriously, go fuck yourself. You're fucking stupid. We and- we all like you said, we all know there's a, you got into this for a reason, right? You started watching it when you were young. Uh, it wasn't from a defensive masterclass from a defensive fighter, did, was it? Like the birth of your interest in the sport was knockouts. I mean, let's let's cut to the chase. I mean, you develop your boxing taste as you go on, and you you get into things, and you like things. You get into it because bad motherfuckers knock each punch and shit out of each other. Really, that's it, isn't it? That's why I got into me, it. Let me let me put it this way, right? Everybody that's over the age of thirty. Um, I think 95% of those people got into boxing because of Mike Tyson. I mean, I, I think that's a fair thing to say. Maybe it's less, maybe it's more. But Especially I'm saying, in the States, but definitely in the if States. You, yeah, if you're from that generation, you were glued to the television screen when Mike came to fight. 
And, and let me put it that way. When Mike came to fight, most people knew the outcome of what's going to happen. But it was basically, I mean, there was sacrifice. no guess. Yeah, yeah, sacrifice. exactly. It was basically a public fucking execution, right? Like people didn't die, obviously, but you knew like, oh, my God, this guy is going to get slaughtered by Iron Mike. And the, everybody's watching it and everybody knows what's going to happen. And, and you see Tyson like strut across the ring, staring at his prey, you know, and, and everybody loves that shit. So if you can't be real about that, whatever, man, you're just not being like honest. war. Like that's, you know, that is one of the most well used terms in boxing war. Like that's what we want to. Yeah. See. That's what our people are into this shit for. That like yeah, you know, of when course, I was man. growing up, like watching Ben fights, and you, and not always you, but sometimes you when it when it when it gets close to the edge where you, both guys are struggling and they're putting it all out there, and someone gets brutally stopped. That's my favorite kind of fight. I'm so, you know I know some people like defense and stuff, but I like it when two guys. I like a, when someone's hurt, teetering, and they come back. I, I just love that. That jeopardy of, of the pain is the reason I watch it. Can I can I mention one little thing, which is kind of off topic a little bit, but I, I want to mention it because I don't know if you've seen this because we didn't spoke at the time, but um, Eubank, who is such a gentleman, right, and well spoken, actually came um, uh, on a on a show, and I I won't get into it, but it was about MMA and it's about a fight happening outside of the outside of the cage, basically, right. And he was the only one. He came on on the on a on a show where everybody was condemning whatever happened. And he was like, "Guys, hang on, like this is war. Like I don't know if you are judging whatever happened. You've obviously never been in a ring, but you you don't understand the concept of what's going on. I've boxed. I have I have made the walk into a ring, not wearing a shirt, ready to beat another guy." senseless it's 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 pure combat and there's a there's always a chance that i will lose my life like if you honestly think that this is just sport then you are sadly mistaken and i love the way you bank described it i could never you know do it as well he as he did. Like, that's what i mean he talks a lot of nonsense like i mean i love he's a mad bastard right he talks a lot of nonsense but actually when you just get him on the sport and mm. not defected by his son or things he's done and he's just talking about the about what it is, I think he makes a lot of very valid points. And it is a war. And that's, you know, these guys, they put their shit on the line, right? You know, it's going yeah. to gonna get messy. And if something kicks off afterwards, like everyone can get, you know, you don't want to see that. But that's because of, it, like you said, their mentality. It's not, yeah. And people, 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 people get emotional, are... especially when you're yeah. about to start doing, punching another guy that will be punched in the face. Your emotions are right at the surface, even if you hide them really, really well, I imagine. Because 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 he also made a point, right, for example, where there were people criticizing the guy who went after the guy outside of the ring is like saying like, oh, you, you shouldn't act like that. It shouldn't be that personal. You should go and hug the other guy after the fight is done. And Eubank responded with, what are you talking about? Like, this guy can end my life. How can you not tell me that this is not personal? Like, <laughs> like I'm there fighting for my life. Like, this is what I am. I'm a fucking modern day samurai. Don't come to me and tell me like this is oh I'm supposed to just hug the guy afterwards. Like, you don't understand the the, the what's the right word for that? You know, the the fucking torment in my head. You know, going through this process mentally. Like, it's it's, yeah. it's a very intense experience to do, right? Yeah, and I just think it takes all sorts. There are people who can do that afterwards but you shouldn't be chastising the guy who doesn't want to do that like when Char like that's when charlo won me over right when he was a prick so we, yeah we, we, exactly. I, come in, I was like see now now we're talking yeah. not now yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not you better speak to al it's like fuck you good you know that kind of thing yeah, i don't yeah, want to hear yeah. about al Heyman speak to al about my next one i want him to say yes yeah, that's i did that to you because i don't like you i, I, I yeah. want to see that but not only that, like the Charlos, for example, were like, uh, what the fuck do you want me to do? You want me to go and shake the guy's hand who, who literally threatened to, to put me on the canvas a week ago? Like, fuck him. Keep running your mouth, bitch. You are you got knocked out. Like, that's what I love. It's so real. It's raw emotion. Yeah. You know? like, but some people, some people can put it aside and go, yeah, and shake hands and stuff. And like, I think 
it's sometimes it's nice to see like to see that when they've gone through something and you can i you know sometimes when two people have really disliked each other sometimes at the end of it there's that respect thing right and they're like right oh fair enough yeah, I, I, so I'd, I, I so i'd knock you out you're a tough guy you know good you know that can happen but it's the point is we're not getting upset about the guy who thinks no fuck you you're still a cunt like i can get behind that as well yeah, and, and guys like Gaddy Ward, they became friends, for example, after three hellacious fights. Like, it happens, right? But everybody reacts different. But you can't judge, you know, you know, the type of intensity that these people have in their heads, man, when they go through this. So it, it, it is a blood sport. And, you know, I, I know we went off on a tangent a little bit. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, Stevenson, good fucking riddance. Like, <laughs> honestly, like, I... I'm uh, I'm more than happy to admit that. Can I just talk a little bit about uh, the nail though? Fantastic nickname, Kvosdik. I've always liked him, Cam. Remember, I I picked him once as well for knockout of the year just because of that beautiful straight right that he knocked the guy out with once. And um, he's a vulnerable fighter. Like I think he's definitely flawed, but he moves incredibly well. And when he puts his punches together, like when he starts letting the hands go, it's a thing of beauty. So I'm I'm happy that he won and. Uh, yeah, I want to see him in bigger fights, man. Like, he, he's a terrific guy to watch. What did you think of Teddy training him? I didn't even know that was happening. I was surprised when I was watching. All of a sudden, I see Teddy there. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, I honestly don't really know how much of an impact Teddy has on this guy because he's very well-schooled, uh, like most of the Ukrainians. And I don't know. I don't really see a difference between Kvostik Na and previous versions of him. So... You know, if he if he gets off on the energy and the and the teddiness, then good good for him. You know, but I, I honestly don't know if there's much of a difference. I know you got off on that shit when you saw him. I actually thought Teddy just repeating the same shit round after round. I don't think he was giving him any important advice. And and I, I agree with you. Like he's so well schooled for from all his amateur fights. I don't think Teddy's gonna add much to him. I, I think it's more of just. Uh, I don't know, maybe manager link up on, like they've said, oh, you know, Teddy wants to get back in the game and like, I don't think it's going to add anything to him. But yeah, I, I was impressed. Um, Stevenson over the years, you know, he's declined so much, you know, previously he'd kind of throw combinations, but he just looks for the left hand too much. He might throw like a stab jab to the stomach and then the left hand over the top, but just that one punch he constantly looks out for. And, you know, as he's got up there in age now, the gas tank is gone like, after six, seven rounds. Like Stevenson's pretty, pretty all done. And um, yeah, that's that's when maybe after the f- the fifth, sixth, when Gvozdik started to maybe take over a bit, pivoting off his off his uh, front foot, you know, letting off combinations and then moving. He wasn't a stationary start target for Stevenson. But my whole opinion on this, the stoppage and the icing, like I was happy to see ice uh, Stevenson get iced. Reason being is I think he really held up the division for for a good couple of years. He ducked Kovalev. Alvarez was his mandatory for like two years, didn't fight him. Fair enough, he fought Jack last time out and now he's fought Gavozdik. Like He kind of fucked up. He should have, should have fought these guys when they were a bit greener and when he had more age, mm. had more energy in the tank. Um, and while he, he was fighting, you know, Carpensi and all these other guys and shit... Um, he was kind of letting his better years waste away. And I was pissed off because he had that great run in 2013 when I kind of became a fan of him. And I say that in the sense of just boxing because people kind of always criticize his his past, which is fair. You know, like being a pimp is a horrible thing. But I'm also a, a big believer in people change. And, you know, like I'm not the same person I am now at age 36 than I was when I was 16. Not saying that I was a bad person person when i was 16 but you know if he did a crime and um, he got punished for it like I, sh- I should always i always think people should be given the benefit of doubt that have changed but i'm bringing it back to the boxing and i think he ruined the heavyweight light heavyweight division for for a good couple of years so i was glad to see him get iced but afterwards when you hear that he's in critical and they're gonna put him in a you know uh medically induced coma and shit i don't like hearing that that's part of the game obviously uh that people can get in, injured to that extent but yeah I'm, I'm not happy to hear that he's he's in that condition and i hope he pulls through for him and his family but um for boxing yeah, he needs to retire um he, he's, he's still definitely got that pop but for what reason like if he's gonna fight lower level guys and be knocking them out and not fight 
anyone high level again. There's no point in him continuing. He might as well just retire and with what's happened um, after the fight. Like, yeah, you you think that his family would advise him? He to should retire. be forced to. He should be forced to retire. Yeah, yeah, he should be allowed so, to pass again. And you'd hope so. Thanks. Cam making me and Chemo look like a right pair of cunts. I had to, bro. <laughs> by being a by being a much better and nicer person than that's both what, of that, us. That's what happens when you're disillusioned. Yeah, uh, you're always the voice of reason, Cam. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I try. I know deep down you hate him. Though. I'm joking. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know that. Actually. But uh, anything right. else regarding that? I only uh, saw that fight. Really, the undercard wasn't yeah. really displayed, and no one was on it anyway. So should we move on? I hope yeah. he'll fight someone good yeah. next. I hope he gets another, like, I hope he gets, I hope him and Jack fight or something happens. Like, well, there's a more good fight to be made in that. Well, in a that good division, segue right? is between the last show we had, Leon, uh, we had our boy Beevil fighting. He fought Pascal. And yeah. I've said it before in previous shows that his career in the sense of opponents is kind of going in the opposite direction how many fight people like pascal and chalemba on the way to a world title he's kind of got the world title and then fighting these guys is, is, i so, think it's just been pushed to it's all too early mm, that's fair but i think now the pressure's on though like they were complaining yeah, yeah. about him not getting pascal out but that's gonna happen if you're the belt holder now like if you were fighting him on your way to a world title then people might not complain that you don't get the stoppage yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely. Like, I mean, there's a lot of good fights to be made. I don't know what Biv- I don't know. I don't understand what's going on with Bivol because I don't understand what who his promoter is and where he's fighting. Really, you know. It's been yeah, like, the HBO have jacked in. Yeah, slowly, exactly. Like, so. He's been on the HBO the last couple of times. They're kind of pushing him hard, but then obviously they they've got their foot out the door. They they've got one show left, and unfortunately, he's kind of. A shitty show. I wanted to get to that later, but what's your opinion on Bivol? I don't know if you saw this fight, Chemo, against Pascal. He won every round. Well, actually, uh, minus one round, so eleven to uh, to one. But um, it, for me, it just seems he gets to a point where he doesn't think he'll be able to get the guy out of there, and then he just kind of goes into cruise control. Yeah, which has happened in more fights, right? Like I did, I didn't see the fight um, also because I had no interest in it. I thought Pascal was kind of an anticlimactic choice, to be honest. Like, uh, I see the talent in Bivol, but I've never been as high on him as you and Lim uh, have. Like, you guys fucking love that, sh- love that fucking guy at one point. Um, I think he's, he's okay, but he doesn't really entertain me that much to, to watch him as a fighter. But, uh, the, the, the standard's gotta be raised. Like, I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna see him face these type of opponents. Come on. Like, we, we can do better than that. But that's all I got out on this. Leon, have you got any inside information? With the will Bevel be going to the zone? I don't know what you're talking about, Cam. I have. Got, I don't know what these connections are. No, um, not that I've heard. No, no. But I think that Triple G thing's done. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on, Chemo. Couple of weeks. Chemo's still that. Chemo thinks I've sold out because I'm taking that zone money. Don't it's you, Chemo? Well, you have sold that. We all established that. But whatever, I forgive you. <laughs> Go on, Cam. Right. What's Kim, next? A couple of weeks ago, Kimo, on Friday the 16th of November, we had Maurice Hooker versus Alex Osedo. Got that fight completely long. Uh, Hooker was pretty good, man. What, what did you think of the fight? Oh, fucking hell. That seems like so long ago, man. I did actually watch that fight. Wasn't this on ESPN? It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was oh, Man, I honestly... I don't remember a lot of details about the fight, um, but I remember it really being action-packed, and it was a very fucking violent finish. That's kind of what I remember. Um, but I really enjoyed it. That's <laughs> about all I could say, to be honest. I don't remember exact details of Didn't it. Didn't he get dropped? He got it was, dropped. Uh, it, it, yeah, there were like multiple knockdowns, right? Yeah, yeah it was a good fight. But, but he kind of took over as it went on. Like It was close for like four, three or four rounds, right, Cam? And then that guy... And then Hooker seemed to up the work rate and take it on from there. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's coming back to me. Yeah, well, Hooker had basically, he was struggling in the beginning and then he made the comeback. Um, yeah, he just seems to me like a very vulnerable guy that starts off a little bit slow. And then he just fucking did the business, man. He got the guy out of there. It was, uh, it's fun to watch. Now, yeah, it was a good fight, man. Um, Sesedo started off fast, aggressive, kind of pushing hooker back and hooker 
he didn't look comfortable in the back foot. Obviously, he had that fight with Perez where he was kind of holding his feet too much and uh, trying to work off the ropes, and he didn't really do it successfully. But uh, in the second, Cecilio dropped in with that like overhand right. Um, he didn't seem too badly hurt. He kind of got up, and uh, when the ref asked him, do you want to continue, he looked kind of wide-eyed, and he was still with it. Um, and then, yeah, Hooker kind of adjusted to Sacido's aggression, started to make him walk onto right hands and left hooks. Like, he's got that ridiculous reach. I think uh, the commentary team came at one point said that he's got one less inch reach than Vladimir Klitschko. And this guy's a 140 pounder, man. He's got some ridiculously long arms, man. Um, yeah, he's, he's the definition of long levers, isn't he, Jim? <laughs> he is in the gym. Um, hmm. But yeah, then, yeah, Hooker took over Cecilio stopped moving his head as much he was kind of stationary and uh, Hooker was landing a lot of one twos just down the center and um, Cecilio started to take a beating slowly and then uh, I think in the seventh uh, a lot of one twos hurt Cecilio and then uh, his legs buckled he, he fell back into the ropes and then they counted as the uh, as a as a count because obviously the rope tailed him up and then uh, Mark Nelson the ref let it go on and then uh, after a barrage from Hooker uh, he waved it off and which was a good job and yeah man like I thought Sado may may have took that fight you know ESPN winning the uh, winning the first bid out over Eddie because obviously Eddie wanted this fight on the zone um, Hooker going to say Sado's hometown uh, putting on a good performance getting a career high payday of I think like 1.2 mil or something like that um, yeah now he's going to go back to the zone with the uh, with Eddie and yeah hopefully go on get some good fights in the 140 division I like it he's an action pack guy to watch and uh, yeah Cam just to get back on his freakishly long arms he looks really weird when he tries to throw short punches like it just doesn't look right. Most most people with long arms do that. Like if you if they see him show a short hook and that, it looks ridiculously weird. It just looks <laughs> uncomfortable. But yeah, I agree to that. Yeah, um, he's a freak. He's an absolute freak. What else was there? We've talked about Bivol Stevenson. Well, there was a card that Sky had in Monaco, which I don't really want to get into. I it, didn't watch one second of it. it was, the Bonanza. It was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty bummy, and then the zone had a card in Kansas on Saturday the seventeenth of November. Uh, Miller beating up that Dinu guy. Actually, Dinu did pretty good. He kind of outboxed him for a while until Miller got to him. But Rios Alvarez, Alvarez Ramon Alvarez, Canelo's brother. Um, that was a bit like a I old, saw it. That, yeah, that was that was a bit of an old school just uh, button basher in in the sense of a uh, old school. Street Fighter, where you're just pressing every button and trying to throw every punch, chemo. Yeah, I mean, I, for you some reason, that, I always want to watch that shit because he's Canelo's brother. No, I watch that so shit because I like Brandon you, Rios. You I've always liked Brandon fuck Rios. Off. Oh, no, the Alvarez brother, he doesn't even look like Canelo, so I don't really fucking uh, take him into account. But, uh, man, I don't know. A Rios fight I'll always watch because I, he, the guy just intrigues me and I, and I like watching him fight. Um, he is kind of lingering a little bit on being shot, but he is still kind of the same Rios, you know? Like, he still has the same flaws. He, st- he still throws a shitload of punches, and he still, you know, doesn't really clinch and stands on the inside and just bangs away. So I- I'll watch it. it. It was a little bit too sloppy, though, Cam. Like, Rios used to punch a lot crisper than that. There were a lot of times where I'm just, ugh, like, getting a bit cringy with both guys, where I'm just like, come on, guys, just throw a little bit more more zip on there but it just it looks a little bit wary and ragged and it wasn't always uh you know visually pleasing but it was entertaining and i enjoyed it and uh yeah man rios got the fucking uh got the w so i'm kind of happy for him to be honest yeah like i agree with sloppy but i enjoyed it man like sometimes you can't you can have as many great technical fighters as you want, but you can't just beat, like, two guys bashing away each other, man. It's just kind of fun. And, um, yeah, Rio still looks short. Even though he, he, bought, he beat Alvarez, like, any step-up fight for Rios, especially at that weight as well. I think this is a catch weight at, like, 151, 152. Like, pff, the guy's just the guy's just done, man. Like, I, mm. I, I don't understand how his, his, his family and his team are, like, letting him continue fighting. Well, I think he's one of those guys that boxing is all he has, you know, and he's probably just an, an absolute 
mess of a person when he's not in the gym and, and getting ready for a fight. Like, he probably gets fat as fuck and just, he likes just in a, beer, a bad mood. I think he likes a drink. No, he, lo- he loves a lot of things. He loves drinking and food and things like that. And, and I think he's just a bit of a loose cannon. In terms of his he sounds like he'd be a good laugh to hang out with. Yeah, I mean, he's a fun guy. But I think if, he, if he's not keeping himself busy, you know, like, like in terms of his shape, like, he just becomes a nightmare. I have a feeling. And I've, 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 I've heard before where he said that publicly, you know, like, you know, my wife is kind of like uh, like my shrink a little bit. And when I'm not boxing, like I just become a fucking nightmare for my family. So I don't think he does it for the money, man. I just think he doesn't. He, do, he just does it because he doesn't know any different. And we all know Brandon Rios. He's not the most well-spoken, intelligent, you know, like guy with a diverse personality. He's going to keep fighting for a while, I think. And it's going to be to the detriment, detriment of his health, obviously. But... What, what can I say, man? He's just one of those stereotypical brawlers that's going to keep going for a long, long fucking time. Kind of like a margarita. You know? I, I understand your point about, you know, that's all he knows, but I think maybe he needs to channel some energy into, like, doing something else because, seriously, Kim, well, all jokes aside, like, if he continues like this, like, he's going to be a cabbage in a couple of years, man. Yeah, but what else can he do, Cam? He's not the type of guy that will go and train people. He just He's just not like that, man. Like, he doesn't have that... I just don't see that in him. He doesn't have that way of articulating himself. I don't think he, that motivates him. He's one of those rare guys that just loves getting punched in the face. Like, it's just what it is, right? He enjoys it. So, I don't know. I think he will end up like a fucking cabbage, but that's his life choice, you know? Uh, can't really do anything about it. All right. Um, mm. Me and Leon and Naoto kind of covered the last six months on that last show so we've kind of just covered what we did between uh, the the last show fights wise so any fights and stuff you want to talk about any news that you guys seen Um, Kimo I know you've not been on since the the beautiful icing of Tony Bellew so do you want to touch upon that you did you guys do a show on that or not I forgot yeah we did it just after the fight ah okay yeah okay um yeah man it was uh it was surprising how aggressive Usyk was, and I really enjoyed seeing that new side of him. Like he, he, he kind of continued the trend that was happening beforehand. Like I, I thought he was very impressive against the Gashev, you know, like just not moving as much anymore, establishing the jab, an aggressive jab, and just just kind of pushing the pace and and yeah, becoming a bit of a aggressive volume puncher almost. And he uh, he he continued that trend, and he. I wouldn't say like people were overrating Bellew's fucking success. I thought Leon was quite accurate, even though he went a bit over the top. Like he was quite accurate with, with the statement that people were overrating this. Like, yeah, he was competitive and he did okay, but he wasn't like clearly winning rounds or whatever. Nah, come on. He, he was in the fight, but he just gassed out really, really bad. And as soon as uh, Usyk picked up, picked up on that. I mean, he smelled blood, and that's something that we don't really see from you say. So I really, really like that, man. And the knockout was beautiful. It was clean, and the way Bellew just fell backwards was almost comedy. So I, um, I respect Bellew for taking the fight. You know, I'm like you guys. Like, I, I really don't like the guy, but I respect the fact that he went for it, despite all the hate travesty that went on before. He dared to be great. And he got beaten up. So, you know, whatever. If that's the way he wants to go out and he will stay retired, I'm still a bit skeptical whether he actually will stay retired. But judging from the way he's talking and when he talks about his family and things like that, I think he might actually. I have a feeling that he will. And No, no, no. no. Ward, Ward Bell, you 2020. No, if if he takes a fight, mate, it's gonna be against somebody with a big mouth who's not that big of a threat to his health. Like Fury, <laughs> say what you want about Ward. Like he will, Ward will beat him up though. Like I, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, see, I don't see him taking that kind of a fight. It would be an hay like cash grab. I think that's the only circumstance that he would come back. He's had his moment where he tried to do the right thing and and dare to be great, and it backfired immensely. So I don't think he will do that again. And people, by the way. People fucking act like Bellew has always been that guy. But 
I'm sorry. Just because you say that doesn't mean that you're the you're the you're the dude that's always been through the gauntlet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, okay, you've faced a few a couple of champions and all that, but you're you know you're not special in that sense. Like, oh, I don't fight anybody. Blah blah blah. Yeah, but you got fucking paid for it. You know what I mean? Like, come on, uh, relax a little bit. Anyway, it was a, it was a good fight. It was exciting, and I'm uh, I didn't expect the knockout, and we got it. So, you know, fucking nice. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Exactly. Um, a bit of news, Camo. Amir Khan Uh-oh. possibly fighting uh, Terence Bud Crawford in March. <laughs> What, what do you think, Kim? Oh, he's going to come back stronger, Cam. <laughs> oh, my God. What is going on, man? We need to talk about this shit. Like, Khan is is so obsessed with Brooke. I think he just doesn't want to give him a payday. I think he'll take whatever chance. Every time Brooke takes a, takes a shit fight, Khan will take an impossible fight just to spite him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you, you, know. you fight a stripper? Oh, I'll fight a fucking pound for pound guy and get <laughs> slept. But at least I'll look good for a few months, you know? And I, you know what's going to happen? He's going to go to the media. Next press conference, they're going to ask him, well, what about Kel Brook? Uh, you know, Kel Brook's fighting a stripper, you know, like blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and it's going to be like, he's just going to try to talk shit. And he just refuses to give him a fucking payday. And it's just. Oh, Kimo, man, like, just... why, why would he want to fight Brook, like the undefeated monster that Kel Brook is? Mm. Hang on, why do you say he's undefeated? I've not even lost. I've lost with two broken eyes, again, so it's so real. You know, real. I've a really lost. I've a really lost. Has he really lost, Kimo? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that before. Two broken eyes, like bro. Like, that's not really a loss, is it? I have, have lost really badly. Broken. You lost so badly that your face got broken. Like, that is a loss. A really bad loss. <laughs> That's like not um, getting robbed on the cars, is it? Having your face broken twice. Like, fucking hell, he is deluded. There are not many people I despise as much in boxing as Kel Brook. Like, he is just... It's not even that he has ill will or whatever. He's just a cunt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's just... Oh. He is just unbearable. Everything about him, his face, his voice, his resume, I just I just I just cannot stand the guy. And yeah. I still want to see Con Brook though, don't get me wrong. I still watch, like obviously, but oh, man, it's just I don't know. I just can't deal with Brook, man. Like Khan has has a, I will always have a bit more of my respect because he fought the, the right fights and the difficult fights when people said he, he wouldn't, you know? When people all said he had a glass chin, he fought my dinner, you know? Like, I I don't know. I will always have a little bit of respect for him. But His resume is strong. Look at the, the... You cannot compare the resumes. They're uncomparable. Khan's Brooke resume is, in the is, l- last couple of years is a bit shit, though, apart from the Canelo. Yeah, but, I mean, that's a long career. He's not been doing this for a couple... You know, they've both had... a did they turn over a similar kind of times? I mean, it's beyond, comp- you know. Yeah, everyone has bad fights, but there's enough good names on Khan's resume to say he fought them. Yeah. Even if they were stupid. Like, so, yeah, the Canelo and Triple G thing are comparable from both of them, but they both took stupid fights, didn't they? That's, I mean, they don't get credit yeah. for taking stupid fights. Le- Leon, do you, think, do you think the fight between Crawford and Khan will materialise? Yeah, I think they'll pay him enough. If they pay him enough, because I think that's the problem. Crawford's going to have to pay people to get them to come over, aren't they? And I guess he's kind of a free agent, isn't he, Khan? Could you see Eddie paying enough for Crawford to come over to DAZN? Because I, I think DAZN need Crawford on their platform more than mm-hmm. ESPN I think, need Khan. I think there's enough money... There's enough money there to whether or not Eddie's willing to pay it because he's a cheap cunt, isn't he? That, that's true. There's, a, there's enough money to, sh- to sink a battleship at DAZN. Like, there's, that's not a problem. What, what do you think, Kimo? Like, does DAZN need Crawford or does ESPN need Khan? I think, I think the problem with Crawford that he's having is he's not in really money-generating fights. And... You know, Khan is still a draw, and 
that's probably why they're going for it. I think it's a little desperate on, on Crawford's end, to be honest. It, it feels a little desperate. Like They oh, are well, desperate. They are desperate because they, they're, the they're, truth I mean, of Crawford's is Crawford's always in entertaining fights. Like the last one, for example, against the what's his ben name Benavidez. Benavidez was was fun, but it's not it's not a guy with a name, right? And and they, they just need somebody that can boost his profile a little bit. And then it's like, uh, who can we get? Oh, let's get fucking Amir Khan. Like, it's just I don't know, man. It's it's uh, I'm not impressed by it. Obviously, I'll watch. Yeah, just Fuck for the yeah. lols. You know, uh, just for the lols. But can can I just shit on Kell Brook a little more? Can I, can I just do that? Go ahead. Because I just, I just opened up his fucking resume once again, right? And we talk about, like, at least Khan has been in the ring with guys like Maidana, who actually gave pound-for-pound pound grades fits, right? But you look, at, you look at what he's done. Like, he loves fucking D-level fighters, man. Like, after the Sean Porter fucking, you know, clinch fest, JoJo Dan, Frankie Gavin, Kevin Bizier. Those were his three defenses. And okay? he was, and he was Those supposed are some of, and yeah. he was supposed to fight Diego Chavez and pulled out two days before with an injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so th- those are some of the worst defenses that I've ever ever fucking heard of in my life. And anybody that says Frankie Gavin is a legit defense, honestly, please go fuck yourself. Yeah, kind regards. And then he he he, he gets basically stunned on by fucking Khan, who fights Canelo, and then he's like, you know what, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to fight Gennady Golovkin and get paid a shitload of money. Gets fucking smashed, quits, right? And then he finally has to do a decent defense. He gets cornered because he has to fight Errol Spence, who makes him quit in his own fucking hometown and beats the living shit out of him. Then he fights Sergei Rapchenko, who is trash. And now he's fighting Michael Zarafa, who is a stripper. So if you add all of that up, Sean Porter is still his best win, which is a terrible win. And it's, it's, just, it's an absolute garbage fucking resume. For somebody that we talk about, and not really we, but you know, people like her and, and as some a, of his fans. As a top guy. Yeah, as a, as a top guy. He must have the fucking worst resume out of everybody in boxing. I think Deontay Wilder has a, has a resume that's light years ahead of him. Honestly, I'm not even trolling. Like, uh, what has he fucking accomplished? And also, the number of Devon he ran from Devon Alexander. I mean, I think there was one where his Alexander was injured, but like that fight never materialized. It should have materialized, and it didn't. Why? Shams one thousand in the chat. Well, Diego Chavez, Brandon Rios, Jesse Vargas, Devon Alexander was supposed to happen. All fell through. So. Mm. Yeah, because but he got stabbed in the leg, right? That's like all oh, the reason for all of his hardship, man. Kell Brook. Oh, where's it, any... any any update on that? Any any news? Any kind of police update on who stabbed Kell Brook? It should be pretty easy. It was in a hotel room, number forty-two. That'd be Mister Johnson stabbed. Like nothing. So something went on because they're not looking for the guy. Like <laughs> like they they you know if it was Anthony Joshua getting stabbed in the, le- the leg or something like that. Her and Rabiul were over it, but they, they didn't want to talk about it. Maybe, they took a picture in the hotel and they just didn't want to talk about it. Leon, maybe it's that Spaniard that's beating up all the, the Brits, you know, the guy that took out Frankie Gavin and Bradley Skeet. Maybe it was him. Yeah. Well, he's a, yeah, he's a, I don't think he would have needed the blade <laughs> by the look of him because he should fight Kel. He's uh, batter uh, Kelp uh, now. <laughs> he's, uh, a, he's, a, he's a vicious bastard, that one, isn't he? Uh, I like him. It's, it's, it's and the thing is like there's some there's still, still people out there that 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 actually have the guts to fucking give this guy credit for his performance against Golovkin, for example. Like, hey, the, Kel Brook, if there's any justice in this world, you know, he gets iced by somebody real quick, well, look, very soon. Oh, and, and sorry, one more thing, one more thing. Let's not talk about the um, super uh, welterweight debacle, right? That was his career at. At oh, 154 one, notice. What the fuck was that? Like you fought one guy, a fucking nobody, and then you left the division once again. What is he fighting at now? This is 154, isn't it? 
or is it just no weight? Is it a catch weight cam or is it one five four? No weight. Last I heard, it was a catch weight just to kind of bring him down a bit in case the potential Khan fight happens because it seemed like Khan was, you know, oh, campaign, like a 152. Campaign, com- campaigning to get the fight at welterweight. So I think he wanted to just test his weight and bring him back down a bit. Man, does he have like nude photos of Eddie Hearn or something? Because Hearn, I don't know why he likes him. Like, I can understand why Hearn has a bond with Bellew because they go back so much. But, like, why is Hearn even tweeting out, like, oh, I've never seen Kel Brook this focused. He's fighting Michael fucking Zarafa. Like, who are you kidding me? Like, I, it's, I just don't understand. Oh, it. just a second. Didn't he also duck, like, recently that guy called Cook? Uh, some Aussie guy. Uh, Brandon Cook. Yeah, right, Cam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ducked him as well. Well, not ducked him, but fucked him. I'm not saying he ducked, ducked him, ducked him, but he fucked it around again. Another fight that didn't materialise. Yeah. Uh, it's, He's been stabbed it's, it's twice. Crazy. Has he been stabbed twice? Mate. I know many people have been stabbed you, twice. Mate, whenever I have a, a, a day where I'm feeling a little bit down, you know, I just put on Spence Brook and I instantly feel better. Like, it's just such a glorious fucking beatdown. He was up on the cards. He was up on the cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until he got his face fucking smashed in and he was on the canvas again. Oh, I can't see. Fuck off. Uh, okay, I'm good. I, I got no, that, that's that card covered, isn't it, Cam? We don't need to talk about that card again. No, that's it. That's enough. Yeah. How bad is that card, by the so, way? Oh, so now, now is Kima going to shit on Lomachenko fighting Pedraza? Hell no, man. I won't let Kimo allow to do that. No, good. Uh, honestly, Cam... Uh, it's state I busy it's... fights against world champions. Get to fuck. Yeah. Okay, I can't really hate on it too much, but I really don't like the fight because I don't like Pedraza. That's the problem. I know Pedraza is a guy that Vassal will annihilate. So, and I just, I never liked him. I don't like the sniper. Like, I think he's, I don't think, I don't think he's good. I just don't think he is. Like, and... For somebody who got smashed by the fucking... Uh, the tank. By the tank. Whatever happened to him, by the way? Jesus Christ. Like, I just I just don't like the fight. But like, do I really blame the guy for getting another belt? No, I don't. So, see, I'm being reasonable. There you are being reasonable. Yeah. But I think it's a funny situation. I know there's people that he's... Now has got a long... I think he's probably got it tattooed on his forearm. Like the people that he thinks Lomachenko's ducked. But, you know, Ooh. like N- Nauta, like he probably has it tattooed, like these people that oh, never heard yeah, of, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? But look, yeah. he's a po- like, you can dislike him, you can dislike his fans, but he's he's a positive guy, like, you know, he's good for the sport. Man, I've come around on Lomachenko, I like him now. I, I, I told you before, like, I actually gave him a lot of credit for the Rigandau fight, even though Nauta, Nauta shat all over that stuff. Like, I, I, I give him credit now, and you know, like, yeah, I've been skeptical of the past and the Salido thing and all that. But at the end of the day, man, the guy's really fucking talented. He'll fight anybody. Um, his resume is obviously not rock solid, but who fucking cares? If he's on the TV, I'll fucking watch. So, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Is there anything else on that card, Cam? Oh, Dogbo. A boy, Isaac <laughs> Lopez, but um, Teofimo Lopez is on there. He'll probably be like messing about and doing uh, Fortnite dances after knockdowns and knockouts and shit. But yeah, I'm looking forward to see Dugby. Um, he's always in exciting fights. But that's about it for that card. Um, same day, obviously, we talked about Kel Brook. That's in the UK, in Sheffield. But undercard is trash. Um, <laughs> oh, it's dog shit, isn't it? Uh, isn't uh, what about our boy Eggington? Is he on that card or something? I would expect him to be on that. Card. Oh, the egg! No, I don't know, man. <laughs> no, oh, they, they give him, they give Eggington an out. There's a good fight actually on the card: Josh Kelly versus David Avanesian. Uh, we've seen Avanesian a few times before. He fought um, Shane Mosley in one of Mosley's last fights. St- uh, beat him on a UD. He also fought Lamont Peterson. Got st- uh, lost to Peterson. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty good test for Josh Kelly. Um, but same night, HBO's final farewell to boxing, most likely. You never know, they might just do one-off fights next year, but, you know, from what they've said, the boxing is not their, um, on their agenda for 
the upcoming future. But it's a shame to me, Kimo. Obviously, our boy Chucko was going to be on this card. He pulled out injured. I think he had some surgery as well. I've seen a picture of him uh, in a wheelchair. So get well soon, Chucko. But it's a shame that HBO's finale is going to be, you know, Cecilia Brickhouse. Even though I like Cecilia, she's kind of Norwegian via Colombia. My wife's Norwegian as well, so I have to big up the Norwegians. Um, I don't know. The last HBO card with her and then Clarissa, Clarissa Shields as well. It's like it's a bit of an L for HBO chemo, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a very it's not worthy of a last HBO card, and um, I have an extreme soft spot for HBO. I think to this day they're still the best in terms of production and atmosphere and fuck man, if you like, I have like a bunch of external hard drives here in my home where I have a collection of boxing fights in HD and the majority of them are all HBO. And every time I just see that logo and the music and lamps and, you know, fucking Harold Letterman, what is 29, 28? Like I, I just, I just fucking love that shit. It, it's, it's always going to be in my heart. Like, honestly, that's what got me into boxing, man. HBO boxing, Pacquiao fights, like Morales, like, Barrera, oh, good yeah. lord, man! Like I, I like that they, shit. They were the elite of elite. In my balls, man, honestly. They were the they were the top of the game, and like, they just fucked it a bit, you know. I don't know. I think they had took some of their fighters they wanted to win lost. I, just, I think they just took their eye off the ball. That fucking money from the dragons is too much. Too much money being made from dragons, like their heart wasn't in it really. Anyway, like, I've got to go and make wife dinner for my wife so go i will on, see mate, you see you all very very soon i give rocky a chance i hope he fucking ices the ginger cunt see you later boys <laughs> bye cheers leon thank you <laughs> cheers bye uh, yeah but cam now that you mentioned it man it does it does get me a little emotional man because i i mean hbo boxing man it's just so fucking great i mean what what a what a history what an incredible number of fights that they that they've had, right? Like it's 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 really really incredible. Yeah, the production, but, value, um, like you said, like you know, mm. live Shirai was starting off. You know, this is a HBO production. You know, it's like it's just it's just classy, man. It's, it's a shame that they're gonna. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame that they're gone. But it, it, the thing is, like at the, end, at the at the end of the day, like things things always change, right? And especially when when the product is not the same anymore, like the days of boxing after dark were gone anyway. HBO was just about a few big pay-per-views once in a while and a couple of other cards with dudes they were committed to. But it, it, it was not the same anymore. Like we have that nostalgia and we can enjoy it in our archives, but you know, it, it, it was slowly like bleeding out. Right. Like, so it's, 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 a, it's a new, it's a new fucking era, man. Like there's a new era of boxing. Like nowadays, what the zone has done, we haven't really talked about it much on air, but what the zone has done over the last couple of months in terms of signing fighters and getting all this shit on their airwaves is, is, is quite incredible. And, you know, if that's the future, fuck it, man, I'm rolling with it. But for God's sakes, get rid of Sugar Ray Leonard, please. Like, just please. I, I love the guy as a fighter, but it's just fucking unbearable. Give Nick Halling a job, for Christ's sake, please. Your, your boy on the YouTube was criticizing Nick the other day. What's his name? The guy that does the gambling stuff, Dwyer. Who? Dwyer. How, how is he my boy? I don't. I don't even watch that fucking guy. That's well, Nota's boy. Oh yeah, that yeah. Uh, yeah, he was criticizing Holling man when uh, Holling was. Uh, what fight was that big controversial fight with the scoring was all over the place? Uh, Bellew fight. That was it. Yeah. Um, Dwyer actually. No, got, do Dwyer actually uh, Dwyer actually picked Bellew and put money on him? I think because cause the odds were so good. I think um, it kind of he was he was basically betting on the odds more than that, the fight itself, in my opinion. But um, he afterwards he said that you know like he gave Bellew no rounds at all, uh, and Holling had like Bellew up and shit, so he was kind of criticizing Holling, man. But so it's kind of going back to the belly fight. It just made me laugh because uh, Dwyer, he was a legend back in the day, man. But he, he, the guys fell off. 
I, I don't really know who he is, to be honest. But uh, Pauling is never a guy you go to for, you know, le- being Unbiased objective in terms of what's going on. <laughs> He's, he's, he's a hype guy, you know, just give him a mic and let him do play-by-play commentary and he'll fucking turn it into the best fight ever. Like, that's 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 all you need him for. You know? Yeah. Just going back to this HBO card, I said that Clarissa Shields is on it and it's crazy, man. She only fought three weeks ago in that, on, on that Kansas card for on on, um, on the zone and she's fighting three weeks mm. later, man. It's pretty active, man. She's staying active. Uh, it's just the, the women's... Divisions are so weak, though, man. She could probably fight like once a month, man, it's, and still be easy for her. Man, she is. She's obviously levels above most of the girls, and, and in terms of everything, right? In terms of technique, also in terms of physicality, you know, like she is a strong fucking woman. So, and that's always been the problem with women's boxing. You know, you get a few gems here and there, like like my boy, like my girl, Kayla Jenner, for example. But like, it's it's. You know, who's she fighting at the end of the day? She's not really fighting anybody that's worthy. And she outclasses most people. So, you know, uh, I'll tune in once in a while. I don't really watch Clarissa too much. Like, once in a while, if I, if I come across it, I'll, I'll, I'll just check out her, her fight and her technique to see what the big fuss is about. Would you, um, use, would you use internet bandwidth to download a HD version of a Clarissa Shields fight? Or is it just like a daily motion 720p stream? No, it's definitely a daily motion. It's not, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not worthy of, of a proper HD download. Like, so it, uh, it wouldn't get archived onto one of your external hard drives? No, 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 definitely not. Definitely not. Katie, on the other hand, would because I just love I, watching her technique. I think you should dedicate one hard drive just to Katie, to be honest. I have two hard drives, one for her fights and the other one for her post-fight interviews and her press conferences. So <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, she's 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 really terrific. She's uh, she's wonderful. By the way, I saw that she's fighting soon again, isn't she? Like on the fifteenth of December. I'm looking at it now, right now. Yeah, she's on. She's, the... fi- she's fighting some fish chick. Yeah, Ava Wallstrom. Very cool name, but yeah, probably gonna get beaten up. Yeah, I don't know who she is, but Katie's gonna ice her. Yeah, fish out. Fish out. Fish out. Friday, fourteenth of December. Gilberto Rimas just. Sorry, Gilberto Ramirez, Jesse Hart rematch. Not interested at all. Uncle Bob Arum just picking anyone, even a rematch to avoid putting Ramirez in with anyone half decent. Man, I'm not bothered about this chemo. Should we move on? Move on, mate. I can't be bothered either. Uh, Saturday 15th of December. Crappy Box Nation card. But it's not even Box Nation, is it? It'll be a BT Sport <laughs> card at the Brentwood Center in Brentwood, Essex. Um, I'm not even going to go through it, man. Just a shitty, shitty Frank Warren card. Same... Uh, Leon will probably be there. <laughs> <laughs> Same Man, night. Is Box Nation still alive? Does it still exist? They're just hanging on by a nail chemo. Like, I'm, I'll give them a few more months and I don't think they'll be around anymore. Like, They're just picking up odd fights here and there, but nothing high quality. Mm. But same night... In the States, MSG came on. Rocky from Stocky Fielding versus Saul Canelo Alvarez. Can Stocky, mm. can, can, can Rocky do anything? Well, he can pay his mortgage after this. <laughs> I apart, can tell you that. Apart from paying his mortgage, can he have any success in the fight? Uh, highly unlikely because uh, at the end of the day, he's not good. <laughs> he's never been... Uh, the guy, I mean, people talk about his punching power. I don't think he's that powerful in terms of power. Um, Canelo is, in terms of skill, absolutely fantastic. And I'm not saying that in a trollish way. I think we've all seen it in the last uh, Golovkin fight. Canelo is really fucking good. He is elite, what we call in boxing. And Stocky is maybe European level at best. So... Um, this is going to be a beatdown, and for for Rocky's sake, I hope it doesn't last too long. Um, but it might actually, because Canelo, you know, unless you come at him, he doesn't get too overly aggressive. So it might be a little bit like uh, like like the Smith fight, you know, where it's it's kind of a continuous beatdown, and he's just going to be end up end up taking all the punches. So I hope his corner is kind of wise about this. Um, 
But yeah, it's kind of kind of cool to see Canelo fight in MSG. I'm I'm kind of down to see that. Uh, but it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not a competitive fight. Like, yeah. I'll watch it for the for the spectacle of it, but uh, it's going to be brutal. Yeah, I totally agree. So I can't add much more. Same card chemo. David Lemieux versus Toriano Johnson. Not a bad fight. Oh shit! Is that happening? I didn't even know that. That's a good fight because Toriano is a crazy motherfucker that comes forward. And if he's fighting Lemieux, I am definitely predicting Lemieux by stoppage because Lemieux is crude. But if you come at him, you're gonna lose. So um, yeah, Lemieux by violent left hook. This is the same card you're talking about, Katie. She, she's fighting Ava Wallstrom on this uh, pay per view card. Um, we also have Saddam Ali versus Mauricio Herrera, or the ghost of Mauricio Herrera. Like, why is Ali fighting Herrera, man? Like, I know, like, you can kind of, you know, come back after that loss on that, but I don't know. Herrera, I don't think, is a, a good enough opponent, in my opinion. Wow, Mauricio Herrera. I haven't heard that name in a long time. What's his last fight? Do you know by any chance? Like, I haven't seen this guy on the airways for ages. Man. If, like, he fought Soto Caras last year in August, got a majority decision win. No, he actually won. Okay. Um, yeah, Ma- Ma- Mauricio Herrera. I kind of have a soft spot for him a little bit because of what he did to uh, to good old Danny Boy. Who you know I despise, but uh, he has nothing left. And Saddam Ali, you know, despite always kind of fluctuating with his performances, is still kind of in his prime. So um, he can move, he can punch. Like uh, Saddam Ali should take care of that quite easily. I think he's got the movement as well to bother uh, Herrera. Maybe I don't know if you kind of get stuck up on the ropes. Like Herrera can maybe outwork him, but he, he should be like if. If Ali struggles with Herrera at this point, he just needs to quit, man, because what else is he going to go on to do if he can't beat Mauricio Herrera? Yeah, and the little victory that he had winning the title, that was an absolute fluke, right? And then afterwards, he got iced by the by the Mexican kid. So Munguia. He, yeah. Had, yeah, he had a little moment of, uh, of glory, but Saddam Ali was never going to be a high performer in boxing. So he should be thankful, actually, for the career that he's had. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Saturday, 22nd December. we got a few cards, but we'll start off with the one in Manchester, Josh Warrington versus Carl Frampton. Kima, how do you see that playing out? Ooh, good fight, good fight. You know what, man? I I see one guy, you know, improving all the time, and I see another guy that's kind of getting up there in age, hasn't really looked the same for quite a few fights. I wouldn't count Josh Warrington out. And I would, you know, I'm not a betting man, but I think this is an interesting fight to have a look at the odds. Because if you get, if you can get Warrington here as an underdog, mm, you know, might be an idea to put a little bit of money on that because I think he's got a, I, I think he's got a good chance. I think War, Warrington is a physically strong kid. You know, he's got good work rate. He's got good skills, very responsible defense. Um, Frampton is obviously more athletic, but I don't know. I, I, I could see War. I could see a close fight camp, and I could see if Warrington does enough work, you know, and and, and takes enough rounds. Like, you know, I, I could see him win a decision here. What about you? I'm quite surprised of how critical people have been about Frampton. Like, people have said like he's kind of fell off a bit. He's not the same fighter. Like, he's getting up there in age. Like, he's only 31. Warrington's 28. Like. Not a big mm. gap, fair enough. Maybe a bit more miles on Frampton's, uh, you know, on his wear and tear, but it's not a massive amount. And fair enough, Warrington's performance against Sabi was really good. I didn't expect it. I thought he was going to get schooled from start to finish. But I wouldn't. Like, you look at the rest of Warrington's resume. Like, that fight against Kiko, I thought he just lost that. Um,. And there were a lot of the fights he started off well, but he kind of faded and struggled. Uh, so nothing really tells me that he's got the skills to beat Frampton. I think he's going to try and come forward like with kind of stepping one-twos to kind of close the distance. And Kyle will just take that half step back, and I think he'll counter him. The problem Selby had was he kept going back in straight lines, multiple steps going back, then getting caught on the ropes. And then he was just under barrage from Warrington, where... Carl doesn't really fight like that. He doesn't keep going multiple steps back. He'll just take a half step, counter, and then 
spin off. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I just do favor Frampton. I think he'll win quite easily as well. Um, I'll probably come back and eat those words, but I've done that before, mm. so it's nothing, nothing for me. It, it's it's interesting uh, that you actually mentioned the age there, Cam, because I thought he was older. <laughs> Um, if he's only 31... Uh, I think because hmm. Frampton's kind of been in the limelight so long, a lot of people just assume he's kind of a bit older than he is. You know what the thing is about him, though? Like, he has lost a lot of that explosiveness. Like, Frampton, a few years ago, was a very explosive puncher, I always thought. Like, he had good power, man. Like, And he just hasn't really... I mean, he's moved up in a way as well. Yeah, so I that think, makes I, a difference. I personally think that's the, the main problem. Like, he's even talked about yeah. maybe going to 130, which I'd say is a big no-no. But he definitely lost some of that explosiveness when he left uh, Super Bantamweight and went to Feather. Yeah, and he's I, he's probably... I mean, he's a small guy. He's kind of bulky as well, the way the, if you look at his frame. But... I have a feeling as well that he just cannot make that sacrifice anymore. I think he's made a lot of that at the lower weights in order to get that advantage. And now either he's not willing or he just physically really can't do it anymore. And yeah, he's just lost quite a few advantages. Um, I think you make a, make a good point as well. Like technically speaking that, that obviously he doesn't fight the same way as Selby, but you, you can't really compare it to anywhere. I think Selby's fucking shit. Um, but I don't know. It's 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 a good fight. I'm I'm actually quite excited for it. But I think Warrington's has got a chance, man. I, he shows different tools in each fight, and you know the days of him kind of showing lackluster performances. I think, and maybe I'm just basing that off the Selby fight, are kind of over. And he does rise to the occasion. So uh, I kind of agree with you. I I wouldn't necessarily make him the favorite, but I think it's probably quite a close fight. So let's see what happens. I'm really looking forward to it. I think this is probably mm. one of the best fights we've had for a while, you know, technically with two guys. But it's a shame that it's clashing with the Chisora and White too. I know which fight I'm going to be watching live. Like, we've seen White Chisora once before. And I don't know, personally, I think it's, it's missing something this time. And um, I don't think it's going to be as good of a fight. So I'll probably, you know watch it afterwards with the, on the download or something, but what, what do you think about the rematch with White and Chisora? Uh, Kem, just quickly before I move on to that, where is the, the, the selby Warrington fight, did you say? Was it in Manchester Arena? Yeah, so the Warrington-Frampton fight is in Manchester, and the white Chisora fight is in uh, O2 in London. Uh, you're going to get a good crowd probably there, because you're going to get the Leeds uh, boys coming down, and then obviously... The Northern Irish uh, will just take that little flight over, right? So it's probably going to be a nice mixed, uh, hostile crowd over there. You should probably go, man, if you can get some last-minute tickets uh, with your uh, with your inside sources. But um, yeah, White Chizora doesn't. Uh, I mean, we we were not really pumped for the first fight anyway. We thought White was going to dominate, and then all of a sudden, Chizora pulls out this crazy performance that we thought he didn't have in him anymore because he was basically shot. I don't think he. I don't know if he can do the same. Um, What's missing? Maybe the fact that he found Jesus and he's all mellowed out now. I don't know. It's that that fucking uh, face off that they did was really weird. Um, but Chisora seems very laid back. It's not quite the same hostility that they had before. So no table. I don't think, I, so no table huh? going to get thrown at a press conference then, in you? Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I mean, I highly doubt it's going to be as good, Cam. Maybe it will. We don't know, but. Usually, what happens in boxing is that you know the rematch is never as good as the first one. So, uh, and the first one was entertaining. I I enjoyed it for what it was. It was a fucking throwdown. So, yeah. uh, I think they're both uh, good fights, actually, man. I uh, fuck it the, about the fact that they're on the same night or just multiple streaming. Yeah, Kim, I, know, I know business is business, yeah, but it was a bit of a cunt move from Hearn putting his show on as well because Warren's show had been announced for a, a good while, like you know. On, you know, written in stone that the fight's happening on this date, and the fact that you know Hearns decided to go up against it, like it's just doing more harm than good, in my opinion. Because both cards are like watchable. Well, not cards. Both main events are watchable main events, and I, I, just, I just think they're losing out. Like it, it shouldn't really bother me because you know it's, I'm not going to lose any money from from either guy. But like, it's it's just a shame that. 
they're doing this to each other, man. Like it's unnecessary. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it's a little bit petty as well. But um, I mean, I don't really have an issue with these things because it just means more boxing on one night. Obviously, I would li- prefer to have it spread out, but it doesn't really bother me that much. So, so it'll be a good night of fights, man. What can I say? Fair enough. And that Sunday, you're going to be busy, Kimo. I hope it's a national holiday in UAE because otherwise you're going to have to spread it out to Monday and Tuesday because uh, in the States, we've got the Charlo brothers, Barclays, New York. We have Jamal's fighting Willie Monroe Jr. and Jamel's fighting Tony Harrison. Both kind of tricky fights for both brothers, man. Monroe's a tricky southpaw on a back foot and Tony Harrison's a, a tricky back foot fighter as well. So the Charlos didn't really, in my opinion do great matchmaking if they want to make an uh, impact on this double header card that they both run. Yeah, the, the fights are a bit like Oscar for me, man. I, um, I'm i not really into it and I know what I want with the Charlos and I just want to see it. Like, I want to see one Charlo fight a guy like Golovkin. I want to see the other Charlo fight Hurt. Like, that should Hurt, Hurt versus a Charlo is some shit that I want to see real bad. Like that, if, if, if it works out, I'd be even willing to go to the States to see that fight. Cause I know that's going to be a shootout. Those, those styles mix wonderfully together. And the Charlos seem to kind of need that, you know, like it's like you say, they don't really do well when it's kind of a, a bit of a, a mediocre opponent with a tricky style. They tend to get in a bit of a slum during the fight and it's, it doesn't really entertain me, you know, like uh, the, the trout fight, for example, I just, I just came out of it with a with a with a, with a bored feeling, like it's not really what I'm into. So, um, yeah, I don't really like this card very much, Cam. I don't think it's very good matchmaking, would you say? Yeah, I agree. I'm not feeling it either. Mm. Uh, that's about it, I think, for the year. That's on the 22nd, along with Warrington, Frampton, and Chisora White too. And then we have the two cards on New Year's and uh, the day before New Year's. On the 30th, we got. Um, Ken Shiro versus Sao Jorez. Um and on New Year's Eve we have a really good fight in Donny Nietes versus Kazutu Ayoka for the vacant WBO belt. That was the belt Nietes fought for in his last fight on HBO when it ended in a draw. So uh, and Ayoka was on that card as well, uh, and he, and he kind of beat up um, uh, William Arroyo in that fight. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. That should be a good fight, I think. Ayoko will win. I think he's the the younger guy, the fresher guy, even though he kind of retired. He's still uh, got a lot of years over Nietes. Nietes is still a skillful dude, but work rate is really low. Um, and I think Ayoko will outwork him and beat him up to the body, man. So should be a good fight. But that's about it for the year, Kimo. I doubt that we'll do another show before New Year's. The next show will probably be like the 2018 kind of review and wrap-up show. So anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here? Uh, I just want to touch on real quick on one individual, and I don't mean to be too negative this show, but I think I've said a few positive things as well. But um, Anthony Yard, I just want to give this gentleman a, a special little mention before we wrap up the show. Lies in the so camp. in case people... Huh? Lions in the camp, bro. Lions in the camp. I don't know what the fuck that means, but uh, all I know is this guy basically had. Uh, am I saying it correctly, Cam? That was it one opponent or multiple opponents that got rejected by the commission? I'm not sure uh, about rejected, but I know they had multiple opponents that fell out, so maybe a few of them just pulled out, and then the last one they had. Um, got rejected and then they couldn't it was too late so they couldn't replace him but i'm yeah that, that's my view on it yeah so i mean even if it's just one it's still disgraceful because it's it's a pattern with this guy and oh man it's 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 i'm getting so tired of this shit like it doesn't keep me up at night but every time i read about this like i just it just pisses me off severely like we we, we talk about safety in the sport and, and things like that. And yes, it's a blood sport, whatever, but I, I don't want to see continuous mismatches. You know, it's, it's one thing to have 
you know, a tragedy strike the sport when it's when it's two guys that are evenly matched that are going to war. But it's another thing to have a guy like Yar continuously fight guys who are not in shape, not experienced, don't have any level of athletic ability, and just shouldn't be in the fucking ring with him. And it's continuing and continuing, and he's had opportunities to fight people. And every time there's a fucking excuse, and... I just don't know where this is going to end. And it's, I'm starting to suspect that whatever Leon said might actually be right. Like, it's becoming suspect, man. Like, th- is this guy really, like, hiding a glass chin? Or has he been dropped sometime in, during sparring where, where, where people are like, whoa, whoa, we need to be careful with, the, with him? Like, oh, he's got, the, he's got the look. He's got the, you know, the potential to be a star. Let's build him up as slow as possible. But... There's build-ups and there's just straight-up trash. Like, I look at his fucking resume, man, and it, it's horrendous. And he's got 17 fights. You know, like, say what you want about a guy like AJ, but look what he accomplished with, with that level, with those amount of fights. Like, I just... Or, or Lomachenko, for example, right? It's, it's... There's no excuse for this. And it's just disgraceful, man. Like, yeah. get your shit together and start fighting somebody. The thing, I'm, 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 sick and, I'm sick and tired of watching these guys that have so-called talent by absolutely nobody. Like, I, are any of these guys even ranked on a domestic level? They're not. The thing is that like, narrative about him not having amateur experience now is it's just getting old. Like, okay, he's not that amateur experience, but at one point you're going to have to test him. If he is not ready for it, then he should have got more experience than the amateurs like you can't have it both ways um yeah and i totally agree like the thing about warren chemo is as much as people give him criticism he puts his fighters in with other fighters in good fights like you look at uh liam williams versus liam smith like hearn would never have made that fight unless one guy was a belt holder or like he he'd he'd make them avoid each other until the fight would be a pay-per-view fight and shit you know, Frank made it happen. Warrington versus uh, Selby. If Hearn had both guys, he like Hearn had both guys at one point. He didn't make the fight happen. You know, mm. soon as soon as Fisheye gets him, the fight happens. Frampton versus Warrington. It's happening next this month. You know, um, mm. Hearn won't make that happen. And if he did, he'd put it on next year in a, in, in, in a stadium to make more revenue from it. You know. Fish eyes not bothered. It made the fight happen. The fact that he keeps on putting mediocre opponents against uh, Yard, he knows, and Tundi, Yard's trainer knows that Yard's got no chin at all. So I think they're just elongating his career by putting him in bums. Hopefully, maybe getting a vacant. The problem is light heavyweight division is stacked. There is no one mm. maybe in the top fifteen. Maybe, yeah, maybe in the top 15, maybe like 15 to 10, okay. But like any of the mm. top guys beat Yard handedly. Well, the thing is, we, we, we don't know, but we also want to find out. Like, and, and, and the thing is with, with some guys, like I can't think of any examples right now because I'm still raging when I think of Anthony Yard. But at least, at least on the British level, you will see, I can think of Eubank, for example. Eubank is very flawed. You know, we understand that he might not be really world level, but we've seen him come up on the domestic circuit facing at least guys that we know are legitimate and known on the, on the domestic British circuit. If I look at Anthony Yard's resume, and I just opened up like the last six of them, right? One guy is from Argentina. The other guy is from Poland. The other guy is from Hungary. The other guys from Hungary as well. Um, they pick these guys that have that by the looks of it, you would think like, well, this guy's got a 26 and nine record. Yeah, he's got a lot of losses, but he must have experience. We don't know anything about these fucking dudes. Like, I would rather see Anthony Yard face somebody with 10 fights who fought for the British title and lost than a guy who's like, 29 and 6 from fucking Hungary because 
we don't know anything about these fuckers. And when they come here, it's like, mate, where did you get that record from? Like, did you just fight in the backyard and have it written on box rec? Because you're not in shape. You have no skills whatsoever. And you're just getting fucking smashed. Like, you, 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 you would get beaten up by people that I've seen here in the gym. You know, like, it, it, it's so dodgy. And it's so, I mean, it's fraud. That's what it is. These are fake fucking opponents, honestly. And I believe these records are probably bullshit as well. Bro, like, I'm loving this Anthony Yard run. Where did all this stem from? Man, I've, I've ranted about Anthony Yard before. And it started with the, with the what was it, the Jose Burton? The yeah. Jose Burton fucking fiasco, right? Where they, where they were like, no, 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 we want to fight Frank Buglione. Frank Buglione is the fight that we want. And it's like, hang on, mate. You've got the opportunity here to fight somebody really good. Well, not really good at a decent level, and you're like declining it because you want to fight Frank Buglioni. How many fights has he had since that Frank Buglioni bullshit? He's probably had like four fights. Like, mate, you have no interest in fighting anybody, anybody with some f- fucking legitimacy. They have, they have no interest, and I, I just, I just cannot stand this prick. Like, and then you watch a YouTube video where there's like, oh, he's doing the pad work. Oh, it's so explosive and he's so skilled and he's going to be a star. Mate, let's fucking see it. Fight somebody with a pulse. Like, people say that Eubank is a fraud, but at least Eubank fought some fucking decent British champions, right? Like, what, what is the guy that he, uh, that he put in hospital again? What's his name? Nick Blackwell. Uh, yeah, you fought, for example, Nick Blackwell. He's not, he's not a world beater or whatever, but he's a good, legitimate fighter. I look, I look at Nick Blackwell in the ring, and I say, like, that guy can fight. He's in shape, he knows how to throw a punch, and he can handle himself at the British level. Fucking Anthony Yard? Secura, Sick, Averland, Shebloka, Nimaspati, and Richard Biryani. That's his fucking last it, Your, your favorite guy. meal. <laughs> oh, my Lord. It is absolutely fucking disgraceful uh, it's man this guy has to be right now if we do the year end rewards he will get the award for biggest fraud in boxing and i'll leave it at that yeah i enjoyed that passionate run chemo oh it was good it's good anything else anyway I, no that's it i just thought it was hilarious that the commission in the states was like no no, no. it's not you cannot do this. <laughs> we cannot take Mr. Cab Driver over here, put him in the ring, and then have a death on our hands. Like, we, we can't do that. <laughs> See ya. So, uh, that's not acceptable. Cool. Yeah, that, that's it, man. That's it. I, uh, I had a great time watching uh, Fury Wilder. It was a very positive boost uh, into, into boxing. And, um, yeah, man, it just feels nice to once in a while have a fight that exceeds expectations. I was like you. I was a little bit annoyed with the build-up. You know, think of it as all, uh, how do you say it, all sizzle and no steak. But uh, it turns out to be a damn good fight. And, uh, you know, it's blown the division wide open now with possibilities. So I'm very excited for the future of the heavyweight division. And Kimo, quick question before we go. I know Lim's not been on recently because he's uh, tied up with the university duties. But he has repeatedly said to me that this year has been in the worst boxing year in many years. I still would say 2014 was pretty whack, but you agree, like, overall now, if we're kind of, like, reviewing this year, has it been a shit year? It has been. It has been. I don't think it's been a good year at all. There are not that many memorable fights, and there's a lot of guys, for example, like Terrence Crawford, that are kind of stuck in no man's land, um, where there's just not, not a lot happening. Um, it is a bit disappointing, but I also feel like it's a bit of a transitional year. Right? There's a lot happening in the background in terms of promotion and organizations and networks, and maybe that's what's what's needed. But you know, I'm expecting next year, for example, to be fucking big for the for the zone. And if they really are what, if they're really about what they say they're about, then you know, if they're going to have a stacked roster like that. I'm expecting some good fights. And if not, you know, then that's a fucking shame. But, yeah, I can't say, I have to, I tend to disagree, uh, agree a little bit with Lim. It hasn't been a good year. I don't really remember 2014, so, <laughs> so I can't really comment on that comparison. But, yeah, this year has been a bit terrible. The reason I remember 14 was because 
we started this podcast in December 13th of, you know, a high of such a great year. And I just remember 14 mm. just being so whack. And we like, right, we just started this podcast and we got shit fights to talk about. That's that's the reason it sticks to them. I, I couldn't tell you any of the, the bad fights we had. I just remember that was a, a really particularly bad year. But Kimo, Cam, wasn't, wasn't that... Wasn't that the, the the start of the Al Heyman era, if I remember correctly, where all these guys got overpaid and they wouldn't fight each other? It Wasn't could, that the kind of the start of it? It could have been. Or am I, it or am I going back too early a bit? I think I think that was it. I think that was one of those years again, which it was a bit of a transition where, you know, you had guys like Garcia just getting millions for fighting fucking nobody. So yeah, yeah. But great to conversate with you, Kimo. Um... Like I said earlier, we'll probably be back in January now to uh, review 2018 and have some banter. But thanks, Kimo. Also, thanks to Leon, who was on earlier. Thank you to the people in the mix of the chat and the people that download the show. We'll be back next year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. All that stuff. Peace. Peace. You just listened to the Boxing Coalition. I did. Man, I love boxing. I fucking love boxing. A big shout out to the Boxing Coalition. You're a newbie. No, I ain't new, man. If my fucking next door neighbor became the number one flyweight in the world, you know what I'd do? I'd fucking walk past the cunt. Derek, how you doing, bro? I was physically bugging you, blood. I disagree. First time I hear the song, man, it was fucking badass. Vamos a Argentina, la concha de su madre. I see the bomb in them. I get home and she's like, what the fuck? Me and the kid are here. Why don't you get home and talk to us? I'm like, man, you guys don't know shit about boxing. Kel. How does it feel to be the new IBF champion? It feels great. It feels great. Do we really dive into the black hole right off the jump? I think he's hiding glass. Just to play devil's advocate. You want one portion of crow or two portions of crow? Give me uh, two portions with a super-sized fries and, um, and a large drink, please. I can't stand him while I'm Scottish. Cringe side. But you won't crush Anthony fucking fat-ass Joshua, would you? He's not fat. Yeah, How about no. you tell us what you weighed for your final thoughts? <laughs> My weight? Thank you for listening to the Boxing Coalition.